The bases dropped on a new edition of Soccer Down here. It's a Friday. It's a freestyle Friday. We got a lot of freestyling to do with musical chairs when it comes to expansion teams in MLS. We got musical chairs when it comes to managers in the Premiership. We got musical chairs when it comes to Portuguese strikers. We've got lots of different things to jump into today. We got Europa League. We got weekend previews, etc., etc., etc. We will have all of that for you and more. But your questions will be a big part of the show, too. So you can drop them in on the Twitch pitch, twitch.tv slash soccer down here. You can also send us a tweet at soccer down here. You can even send us an email if you want. Soccer down here at Gmail. Okay. Couple of things. We did the uh, live show last night, our first live show in over a year at Wild Heaven West End. Thank you to everybody who came out. Um, it was about perfect, to be honest, for a, a first show. It was a comfortable sized crowd. Didn't feel like it was too crowded. Didn't feel uncomfortable because of the number of people, which was good. But there was a crowd, which was great. Um, people were having the Wild Heaven beers. There was good conversation. It, it was very cool to see people in the same space again. Um, my amp might not have survived the pandemic, I learned. <laughs> uh, the people watching on Twitch, everything sounded great. You guys were, were thoroughly entertained by me frantically trying to make sound work in the building. Uh, switching out cables, thought it was a bad cable. Switched another cable in. Nope, not the cable. Tried different inputs. I think... My amp, which had not been turned on for 367 days, I think my amp might be uh, done. It, it might have caught the COVID. So, yeah, we're going to have to uh, pick up a new amp. Uh, that's where we're at. Um, thanks for bearing with us for all of it because it was, uh, it, it was an experience. It was a little hard to focus on talking soccer and making sure sound worked and I know the video shot was a little interesting at times with uh, the sun going down behind John and he would disappear and it looked like he had a <laughs> halo over his head at one point. And, you know, these are things we're Some trying to figure would out. say that's do. an improvement. Um, that you had a halo over your head? No, that I would disappear. I wasn't going to say that. That's, that's <laughs> just mean, John. I wouldn't do something like that. Um, all kinds of stuff, but thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for being part of the show, and uh, congratulations to our winners of our gift certificates. We'll be back in a couple of weeks over at the Lost Druid in Avondale Estates for our next live show, and then they really start to ramp up quickly in April. So thank you to Scott Flood, everybody with the Flood Project, for making last night happen. We got more coming, and it's going to be fun to do these live shows with a functional amp. We'll get that going. <laughs> oh man, yeah, Alex Basine, you're gonna have to start giving John like 15s on the uh, on his scoring, so I can get a new amp. I don't know how that actually helps me get an amp, but sure, it sounds like a plan. Yeah. Um, let, let's get into the musical chairs this morning because it looks like there will be a job open in the Premier League. This was one that we kind of wondered if there would be a change at Sheffield United. I mean, normally when you have the season that they've had, you see a change. It sounded like maybe we wouldn't because you're talking about somebody who has been at the club for seemingly ever. But, John, the news out of England this morning is that a manager's press conference scheduled for, I think, 3 p.m. local time has now turned into a press conference at 3 p.m. local time. Yeah, Sky is saying uh, set to leave the role after five years in charge. And remember, Sheffield United was in League One when Chris Wilder started his tenure, and they went League One to the championship, to the Prem. They were ninth last year in the Premier League and uh, uh, apparently shocked the Premier League with uh, formations and such. But uh, they have not been the same team this year that they were last season in the Prem. When you ain't scoring goals and you're giving up goals, that's not a good combination. And they've been at the bottom of the table all season long. And it also appears that there have been some disagreements between Chris Wilder and the uh, club owner, Abdullah bin Musaad bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. And it has to do with the direction of the club and differences there. And so it looks like that both sides are going to go their separate ways. And uh, it looks like the 
if the reports are correct, the, the U23 manager is going to be the caretaker for the remainder of the season, and he'll have his opportunity to get the job full time. But uh, we've also got uh, our friends with the juice boxes who are looking at other folks as well. Yeah, um, I mean, you're going to have something temporary because it's just the nature of it right now. Their, their season is done. I mean, yeah. it, they're they're not going to save themselves. So you, you do need somebody just to come in and and put a team on the field. I mean, it's that simple. You can take your time here to figure out what you want to do. And the names are, are a little interesting. Um, one thing to go back in time, it sounded like back in January there was an issue here. And when we started to hear Chris Wilder talk about, you know, I haven't heard anything. Like, yeah, I would think I would hear something by now. Um If we're on the same page, yes, I'd like to continue. And according to Ian Ladyman of the Daily Mail, there was this four key needs that Wilder put to, I I guess, the board or or the ownership. And it was don't sell, number one. Well, okay. A few loans, sort training ground, and don't change management structure. That was, I guess, his last attempt to try to, to save the relationship, to move forward. Nope, and now it looks like you're going to move on. And pecking bottom makes sense in the short term. But in the long term, Danny Cowley, former Huddersfield Town Manager, has come up. Eddie Howell's name has come up. Neil Lennon's name has come up after what he did at Celtic. I, I, I knew that would happen. I mentioned you, you Celtic or Neil Lennon. Lennon. That signal and Jarrett just comes screaming in. And Jarrett has thoughts on Neil Lennon to Sheffield United. Jarrett, what are your thoughts? They're not good. <laughs> that's fine. No, they're just that's pretty much like the thesis of it. Like, man, Neil, just stop for a minute. Uh, the dude, the Rangers fans are already talking trash to you straight away, Jarrett. It's good times <laughs> in the Twitch. That's page. fine. That's fine. Like. <laughs> I've been stabbed so many times by this man. The nerves are dead. That's you might as well be stabbing a piece of ground beef at a at a win Dixie. The, the season that, ah. that your your squad has had, yes, it's been that bad. Yeah, it has. Um, man, Neil, Neil, just take a break. Maybe 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 step away for a bit. Maybe don't manage for a bit. Maybe clear your head. I don't know. I just uh, here, away here, from the touchline, sir. Here's my thing: if you are Sheffield United. And you're trying to figure out. Now, there's no, look, there, there's nothing from anybody at Sheffield United saying, like, yeah, we love Neil Lennon. But if, if you are in that boardroom and you made the decision and it's like, okay, we're, we're going to do this. Man, we don't really like doing this, but we're going to do this. It's time to move on from Chris Wilder. Who are we going to talk about? Who, who? Hey, Joey, over there, what, what, who do you have on your list? Ah, you know, Eddie Howe, he'd be a great possibility. He's out of work. Okay, that sounds good. Danny Cowley, yeah, that sounds good, Jimmy. Um, hey, Steve, who do you think? What about Neil Lennon? <laughs> How is Steve still in the room if that comes up, Jared? Yeah. What about what about the manager who's just way regressive and who oversaw a fantastic collapse of a Scottish power? What about him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, what about that guy that has a, a coin flip to win a league every year and somehow catastrophically ran his team into the ground over and over and over again and uh, not, taking nothing away from Rangers because Rangers no. won the title, but it, it at a minimum... Rangers, Rangers, haven't, Rangers haven't lost a game. This is a different conversation. If Rangers wins the title by nine points because Celtic dropped like you yes. know, two games and picked up a couple draws, but had a great year otherwise. Yes. And, you know, makes the round of 32 in the Europa League. Like, that, that we're having a different conversation. Yes. But no! Yes. yes. That's the thing. I have I have no dog in the fight. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of either Rangers or Celtic. I just enjoy the Rangers and Celtic people, like, slapping each other in the face on a regular basis over, like, the two of them fighting it out over the title every year. This well, one... I am, a, I am adamant that the universe is a better place... When Rangers and Celtic are both good, it makes it more fun to banter. It, it gives Scotland a better chance to go efficient. Like it, it, it is the rising tide in a sense. It would be a much it, more fun place if Aberdeen or, or our, our friends with the cabbage oh, could be competitive yes. as well. That would be an even more fun place. I'd really like that place. Yes, but when it's just one team, like when it was a decade of just Celtic, it gets old real quick. If Celtic can like really truly imploded, 
Um, and it's just Rangers for like five years. Yeah, that's not really a fun place. It's fun if you root for that team, but it gets old real fast. Because here's the beautiful thing about sports. We like uncertainty to a degree. Yeah. Yeah, you like to know that you've got a shot. You like to know that your team's got a shot. And and in this case, just, just the big picture here, and we'll, we'll get into a couple other uh, questions relating to Celtic and Rangers because that sparked some conversation. Um, for me, it, it's... Saying that Celtic has had a horrible season by their standards and that Neil Lennon did a horrible job this year, it doesn't say anything about Rangers. Like I think for some maybe that's got lumped together, and it's it's not. If it was a close title race, if as as Will says, the league shouldn't be over before the split. You know, you go down to the last couple weeks and, and Rangers wins it, or they win it because they beat Celtic twice or whatever. Fine, then it's it's Rangers was just the better team. This year, Rangers was the better team, and Celtic made it so much easier for them by being a horrendous dumpster fire of wasted trash that had rotted inside the restaurant for five weeks. Yeah, so one of my coworkers, uh, we haven't been in the office for about a year now. Uh, One of my coworkers went to the office to pick something up with permission, and someone they sat near had a coffee cup that apparently had been sitting there since the day they left the office. And this is oh, like no. nine months on. Ugh. And it like was like growing things inside the coffee cup. Whatever that was growing is basically Celtic season. Oh. Yeah, it, it was that bad. Um, okay, here's a couple things from the Twitch pitch because this was supposed to be about Sheffield United and Scotland. Is completely let's let's <laughs> drag over. this truck back on the track. Yeah, yeah, Scotland's taken over. But a couple of things. Um, first off, when Neil Lennon's name came up, Coco said, rest in peace, Sheffield. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the the Lennon memes are amazing. Imagine if Lennon turned Sheffield into a good team. I I mean, Dalzon, who who is our resident Rangers fan, said, "Imagine if Lennon turned Sheffield into a good team." I that would be irate. Just yeah. <laughs> if Neil Lennon becomes progressive, not even about Sheffield. <laughs> he oh, becomes. You know what? He, I hope I hope he does. I hope he I hope he finished this season with, with Celtic like the way it ended. I hope he went home, turned on a vinyl of Johnny Cash's cover of Hurt, and just stared in the mirror for two or three playings of it and had like an existential experience and realized, I've got to get progressive or else I'm not going to be able to do this anymore except for like, I don't know, I can go get drinks with Big Sam at the bar. Neil Lennon. Actually, the, he's more progressive than Big Sam. Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah. I mean, that's really not saying much, but he is. Um, Neil likes to get forward. He just likes to get forward in the – like, get it down the wings and sling it in yeah. there. At least he's not afraid to get more than one person forward. That That is accurate. Uh, Crouch would have had 40 goals a year playing with, <laughs> playing with Neil Lennon. Jesus. Coco wants to know your thoughts on the uh, fun, pretty fun 1-1 one, one draw from Rangers yesterday. They answered questions for me. Um, holy God, the saves. Um, you know, I mean, it, it could have been, you know, it could have been more against them, but I mean, hey, that's they answered questions for me, and that they managed to hold it to one goal. They got their away goal. They're in good shape going back home to get through the round of sixteen. It's great for Scotland's coefficient, which benefits uh, benefits them. Of course, it's going to benefit Celtic. It's going to benefit as of now, Hibernian um, potentially Aberdeen. If Aberdeen can, Aberdeen can jump up there, that's a whole different kettle of fish. Yeah. Uh, God knows Hibs is giving them the chance to do it because they've dropped two straight. So Aberdeen needs to uh, kind of get the let out if they're going to do that. But it's good that you know they went in there and they didn't hemorrhage goals because that was my concern with Rangers is that even though they dropped like ten goals on Royal Antwerp, they surrendered like six yeah. or seven to Royal Antwerp. Um, yeah, it's. I, I, I still have concerns about their defense, but it's a good performance yesterday. And um, I'm not saying Steven Gerrard to Liverpool tomorrow, but I think for games like that help his case in a couple mm-hmm. of years when this conversation really picks up. Yeah, 100%. He, he just needs time. I mean, he just needs yeah. experience. He needs to, to go through these things. And I think he's gotten better every year as a manager, and yeah. that's the thing that I was skeptical that he would, especially after last year, where they completely turned into a tire fire after Christmas. I I had a lot of questions for what 2020, 2020, 2021 looked like for them. He's done really well. Yeah. And if he keeps improving, yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah. I have zero issues. Uh, Valazan was thankful that Rangers weren't drunk yesterday, just hung over. Um, 
their, their thoughts on how drunk they will be in the second leg. Uh, I guess however drunk you need to get to get through that one if you're oh, Rangers, man, whatever like, it takes. Stevie's going to, like, sneak into the garage the night before the race and break the restrictor plate on that thing um, going into the second leg. I can see the second leg just being dumb. Um because I'm, I'm genuinely curious how he's going to play. Because he, he, he'll, like, I know he'll like to open things up, man. But how open do you get here? Like, you know, Prague's going to come after you because you have the road goal. If it ends tomorrow, as it is, Rangers go through, so Prague's going to have to come after it. How do you approach the CBU Rangers? Do you try and also kind of take the fight to them to keep them on the back foot a bit? Do you? Do you sit and counter? How much do you trust your defense? You know, how does it go? And of course, it's it's COVID season still, so somebody could pick up COVID. God only knows. There's that. Things could get weird because of it. Um, there's definitely that possibility. Okay, we we've talked about this in different places before, and I'm going to ask you to make it quick, Jarrett. Um, Dalazon asks about the thoughts of Celtic and Rangers merging into the English pyramid. Dalazon said EPL. I've always thought it was championship to start is where yeah. you would drop them in if you did. All right, let's make this real quick. Real quick. This before. Um, championship or League One, either one's fine with me. Um, the money for winning championship is really similar to the money you get for winning Scotland. I think if you okay. gave them a couple of years, they would – uh, they would actually be able to generate a lot of gravity in in what mm-hmm. their names represent, and they would be just fine. I think they would kind of sit in that middle champion, middle of the championship, maybe make a jump every now and then. You get, God forbid, you give either one of them the uh, English you know, EPL money, could get fun, but I think it would take at least a couple of years. Uh, Scotland is going to be radically different if that happens. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of knock-on effects from that. I think today, yeah. right now... It's hard because, I mean, you see what Rangers is doing in Europa League. They're they're very good, but they don't have access to the same amount of money that your your bottom Premier League teams do. So they're, you know, in some ways punching above their weight because of that. But if they can get into that and stay and, and, and bring in that money, then you're having a different conversation and you're in kind of uncharted territory for these teams, to be perfectly honest, at least in modern times. I mean, you go further back where there wasn't as big of a, a gap between TV money between the two, and, and yeah, they were right there with everybody else. But now, it's a massive gap. If they want to be Champions League you know, perennials and not just making up the numbers or getting into the qualification, they've got to bring in more money. The only place they can bring in more money is in the Premier League. The idea of having like a Champions League evening at, at Ibrox or at Celtic Park with lots of money and big teams and like you got, you know, PSG, you've got Barcelona, you've got these big clubs coming in and Celtic and Rangers aren't just trying to like huddle in the corner and rope a dope. The idea of that is absolutely intoxicating, but yeah, I don't see it happening. And, um, Oh boy. Imagine what happens if Scotland gets a referendum. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Dalazan doesn't want you to talk any noise about Steven Gerrard going anywhere. He wants him to stay, which I get. I don't blame you. Sam, I like Gerard Gerard said I like said Steven Gerrard. Gerard yeah. said I like Steven Gerrard. I have no beef with Gerrard. I mean, he's yeah. a good manager. In his, in his interview with Sky after the season was over, Gerrard said that everybody wants Jurgen Klopp to be the manager at Liverpool. And any talk of him being there, it's just it's premature right now. That's also the smart I, thing to say I from a PR Brandon perspective. I didn't want to leave Celtic either, but he left in the middle of the night. Things no, happen. That's true. I think Gerrard's there for at least two or three more years, though. You're I, fine. You're going to be okay. I, I think at least one more. We'll, we'll see past that. I think at least one more. Uh, Sam Williamson wants to bring Neil Lennon to Charlotte FC. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm okay with that because that means okay, cool. We don't have to worry about Charlotte for a bit. Cool. <laughs> that's, that's true. I would be highly entertained by this. Uh, who would Neil Lennon get drinks with first, Jarrett? Big Sam or Steve Bruce? Oh man, uh, I think it's Steve Bruce. I think Bruce is a little bit more progressive, but like that. Well, uh, he likes to go back to the throwbacks of the uh, inside forwards, and he likes to really get progressive with false tens. So, yeah, I guess so. Yes. By default, Steve Bruce is a little more progressive than Big Sam. Um, okay. Probably getting, probably getting drinks with Scott Brown and Stephen Glass, though. 
Uh, and it leads us to another element on the managerial musical chairs. The the comments in the Daily Record in Scotland are, are still on Stephen Glass being one of the favorites for the Aberdeen job, although Sven Goran Eriksson's name has come up now, which I did not have that one on the bingo card. I did not see that one coming. Not necessarily for the managerial job, although that seems to be a possibility. He might also be interested in a director of football job, which has been a big part of the conversation um, around this next era for Aberdeen. So keep an eye on those possibilities. Jarrett mentioned Scott Brown. That's another story from the Scottish press that Scott Brown, who is out of contract at Celtic this year, and look, I you're a longtime Celtic fan, so you have a different feeling about Scott Brown. Lately, he looks like a player who is is at least two years past it. Yeah. Like he, he just can't keep up at this stage. So there's not a lot left yeah, on the field for him. Um, but the talk is, because of his previous relationship with, with Stephen Glass, that he could go to Aberdeen as a player assistant. And just in general, we've had this conversation about players going into coaching a lot. That's a smart move for any player towards the end of their career to start getting ready for what's next. And if, if he can give you a little bit on the field and it might be spot starting it might be coming off the bench to rest guys but working on his coaching it's a smart move for his future i agree um and it's it's really tempest to play the he's a winner card but uh oh i forget god who was it the other day um tony mulberry somebody who said like scott brown's arms are probably sore from lifting all those trophies over his career um and he has lifted a lot of trophies so if you want somebody to bring in a mentality of he has been there. He has started. I think he's one of three players to start every single of uh, the Celtic uh, quad treble, all 12 trophies. He started in all He started oh. in all 12 of the, the trophy games. Um, if you want somebody, I guess, who's got who, – who knows how to deal with those moments, it's not a bad guy. Um, if he can translate the dark arts and obscene insanity that he had earlier in his career into coaching – it's not bad. I will tell you though that, like, go look at Twitter. There are plenty of Aberdeen fans that feel the same way about Scott Brown that you do, Jason. Um, well, the, I mean, yeah, a, rivalry. I get he it. He is a top. He, he's a top class heel. Yeah. Um, but but would it, the, would it the be one part of those situations where days. even if he was a part of your roster, I mean, it's it's like we see heels in other places. It's like yeah. you hate him when he's over there, but you'd love him if he's on your roster. Would this even it's the AJ Przezinski? Yeah, yeah, that's a um, that's a big know. part of it. I think a lot of it depends on how he how he would do in the role, and it it would be risky, I guess. But it depends on how he would do in the role. I'm intrigued by the, the idea of him going. In. Jared is disappearing into the distance now. The black years, helicopter flies off, it, of course. Let's try again, Jared. I mean, yeah, he did have some amazing years. Um, so I mean, maybe if 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 he can translate that to coaching, if he can be a positive experience, because other players have talked about, you know, him being a guy who is kind of a, he, he's kind of a buoy in the ocean, so to speak, that he's kind of a center, like a touchstone that you can always reach out to. He's a grounding wire where he is a part of the club. He is a club legend in a lot of eyes. And guys talk about, you know, positive effects he has. Can he continue that in another club? I don't know. And I understand the, apprehension from some Aberdeen fans about that if, if that's what happens but we're also talking into intense hypotheticals so please don't worry yourself sick over it yet well Daily Record came up with five reasons why Scott Brown at Aberdeen is a master stroke five reasons eh yeah so he's gonna man he's gonna two foot Callum McGregor in the universe is gonna unmake itself on the east end of Glasgow okay so you talked about dressing room presence and their, t- their second topic is winning and evolving. And here's how they phrase it. You say you want a revolution. Brown is the identity, identity figure you want if you are mixing things up. Make no mistake, Aberdeen are aiming to evolve in terms of their style of football in the coming years. Glass is well-versed in a passing-based style at Atlanta. And Brown excelled under Brendan Rodgers and his revolutionary brand of possession-based football that changed everything at Celtic. It goes on there, but those are the first two sentences when it that's, comes to that. That's interesting. 
he did well. I mean, now it's just a matter of he just – I think his legs can't do it anymore. Um, it is what it is. Um, anyway, again, we're, we're, we're into a theoretical right now. Don't worry yourself sick over it if you're Aberdeen fans. Um, what else you got? There's a lot of there's a lot of related. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff this morning that I think will continue to be kicking off during the show. So uh, we apologize for the whiplash uh, of what the Friday show yeah. is going to be. Well, Jason said Neil Lennon, so it's his fault. <laughs> I, I didn't say it. the The bookies said oh, it about Sheffield United. I, okay, I'm not. Fault. I'm not caping for Neil Lennon to go to it, Sheffield United or Charlotte or anywhere else right now. Okay, it's the bookies' fault. That's fine. Um, Byrne points out that if Rangers keep progressing in the Europa League, it'll make Scotland pass Austria for 10th, which would mean automatic group stage. Scotland can also thank yep. Jesse Marsh for that and his total lack of competence in European play. Byrne continues the uh, the Jesse Marsh <laughs> hate club right now. <laughs> He's got to win Byrne big games. Just, like, manages to throw in as many Jesse as, as he does in the same way that if I'm going to slip in as many Steven Gerrard slipping, you know, analogies as I possibly can. He's going to do the same thing with Jesse Marsh just in general. True. And the amount of work it takes to, to maintain that pettiness in a creative way, I, I aspire to that efficiency. So Paul Heckingbottom is going to take over at Sheffield United uh, with Chris Wilder out. Next four fixtures for Sheffield United. Leicester on the road, Chelsea on the road, Leeds on the road, Arsenal at home. Oops. <laughs> that is, well, that's I'm rude. Go steal points off Leicester. Because Brendan Rodgers seems to be like running his team into the ground anyway. Uh, yeah. But oof, that's a that's a that's rough a introduction. Rough. That is They're a plus five eighty in the game against Leicester right now. Yeah, it's 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 not pleasant. Um Okay, so we will keep you posted on the managerial carousel when it comes to England and Scotland and their, their seeming you know, relationship here with guys moving back and forth. Neil Lennon could go to Sheffield United. Frank Lampard still waiting to see him end up at Celtic, Jarrett. <sighs> Let's do it. Just get me to the summer. Let's do it. It's <laughs> not a bad move. Get me to the summer, and please, God, do the damn honor guard for the old firm. If you play the game, if Nicholas Sturgeon doesn't shut it all down, hey, Celtic, get out there and give the honor guard. Yes, please. Rangers deserve it. Please. Not even about pettiness. Rangers deserve it. Yeah, they absolutely do. They absolutely do. This stuff's got to stop. Okay. There are rumors now about what is next for Cristiano Ronaldo. Because that has kicked up in Italy after Juventus was knocked out of the Champions League. And we... We kind of talked about it in hypotheticals about, well, you know, Juve's going to continue to get younger. They're going to have to to figure this out. What do they do? He's got a huge wage. What can you do? It's still in the very early speculation phase because the range of prices I am seeing for what Juventus would accept for Ronaldo is seriously all over the place. It's like a bad um, eBay auction at this point uh, of trying to set a buy now price that makes no sense. Deal-.com. Like, I've seen $60 million is what it's going to take to get him from Juve with one more year on his contract, and he's 36. Um, I've seen more like 20 as well. Um, you also have Jorge Mendez, his agent, popping up and saying, eh, you know, Real Madrid was really good for him. Maybe. Possibly. Uh-huh. Um According to El Chiringuito in Spain, the, the wild, crazy radio show in, in Spain, Jorge Mendez has contacted Real Madrid. Um, it was an informal chat. This is from Josep Pedro, the, the host. It was an informal chat, and Mendez always chats with Real Madrid's executives. Mendez spoke about Ronaldo with Real Madrid. I don't know if Cristiano is aware of that, but there have been talks. Um, they speculated that Juventus could sell Ronaldo for 29 million euro. Now, look, if you're Real Madrid and Karim Benzema is starting to, to look fondly at returning to France and you don't get Erling Haaland or Kylian Mbappe, like is they're talking about you potentially trying to get both, and now you're like, maybe Mbappe's out of our range. 29 million for Cristiano Ronaldo isn't a bad plan C or D if you want to go down that road. Now, AS in Spain 
reported that PSG is showing interest, which would be odd. I guess maybe it's a plan B or C for them if they don't get Lionel Messi or they don't keep killing Mbappe. And I think they're going to keep Neymar, but who knows? Um, you want to get, <laughs> I mean, PSG wants to go completely nuts and go get Ronaldo, go get Messi, keep Neymar, put those three get up front all. somehow. Sure, let's do it. Um, sport, you people got? I don't know. Sport Media Set says a bid of 60 million euro would be enough just to get Juve to the negotiating table, which is a lot different than 29, but again, that's where we are. Uh, PSG interested along with Manchester United, Manchester City. No, I'm not seeing that at all. That makes no sense. Clubs in MLS, again, you're going to have to deal with a federal case and get that dealt with uh, first before you can make a deal happen. Clubs in the Middle East, Ronaldo's also said he'd like to return to Sporting Lisbon toward the end of his career. They don't have 29 or 60 million euro to spend. Where does Cristiano Ronaldo end up next season? Who is he playing for, Jarrett? Oh, man. Um, see, I don't think it's Real. I think they're going to throw their money at, at, at younger guys and take this opportunity to try and go after Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. Um, I mean, what are the odds he stays at Juventus? Yeah, it's possible. Like, just, just like I feel like you're in a Yankee situation where, like, the early 2000s, where... Uh, where you had this issue where it was you're, you're signing guys who are kind of on the back end of their career and you're signing them to long-term deals and then you realize, oh, crap, these guys, like, we, we might have to move these guys, but we signed them to big contracts and now they're older, but they're so expensive and we might be stuck with them. Hopefully somebody can help us take them off our hands. Uh, Boston kind of did the same thing for a while. But maybe, maybe he just stays at U of A because they can't get rid of him. Uh, Zinedine Zidane had to to speak on it today and his media availability. He said, you know what he is, what he has done, and how much love we have for him. Now, he is a Juve player, and I cannot tell you anything about what they, the media, are saying. He's a Juve player, and I have to respect these things. So it is being (laughs) talked about all over Spain at the moment. Um, Through the poll up in the Twitch, uh, where you guys think Cristiano Ronaldo will end up next year. Miami has already come up, um, which... Okay, I mean, uh, yes, we could see this. Uh, It's possible. I wouldn't say that it's out of the complete realm of possibility. You do have that federal case you're going to have to deal with. You know these things can get dealt with. Uh, But, as the sound effect does not want to play because it hates me. Man. Um, But there is talk from uh, a lot of sources and this one kind of connects the dots. We, we, we had the conversation about Lionel Messi to Miami. Yeah. Well, according to Guillaume Balague, uh, Messi and, and Ches Fabregas are good friends. Fabregas wants to come to MLS. Messi wants to go to Miami in 2023, as we said. Fabregas could come next year to Miami, and they play together in Miami. If you're adding... Fabregas and, and Miami Messi. still finishes eighth in the East, and they probably do. And they have Iguain, who I would assume would still be there in twenty two. I don't know about twenty three. You're not going to have the designated player spots for all these guys, so that becomes yeah. an issue. Well, do you get an AARP discount for your designated player spot with Iguain? Oh, that's a little mean, but uh, I think you could qualify. Yes, get your senior player spot. Yeah, that's a little rude, Jared. But yeah, so was scoring one goal in half a season for uh, Miami. If you're going to pick on somebody, pick on Matweedy. Iguain was okay, at least. Blitz <laughs> Matweedy came into MLS and was like, I'm just going to, oh God, they're fast here. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think Matweedy oh got a MLS rude awakening. Because so, it, it wasn't what he thought it was. The no votes way. so far on, on our poll, two for Manchester United, two for Juventus. Other is, is leading the poll. So not Real Madrid, not Manchester United, not PSG, or not Juventus. I'd love to know where he ends up then, uh, according to these things, because that's who wins the poll. Um, Porto. No, no, he'd never go anywhere. No, no, no. And see, that's the thing. is He, he wouldn't go anywhere else in Portugal other than sporting. Like, never. Right. 
I don't think he would go anywhere in England other than Manchester United because he does have a lot of love for that club and a ton of respect for Sir Alex Ferguson. I wouldn't see him anywhere else in Spain other than Real Madrid. So he does have some limitations. France, I mean, uh, he'll go where the money's good, and PSG would be where the money's good. So yep. um, the connection that a lot of people have made, and, and Dalazon posts an article in the Twitch pitch about it, and I, I've seen this as well, is Fabregas and Messi, good friends. Their wives are even better friends. And I think it's Fabregas's wife who really wants to come to the United States and they want to play together and be in the same city and all these things. So Miami might be uh, getting some really interesting things going on, uh, thanks to the wives. Yes. Ricky Ricardo's yeah, voting for sporting also... for Cristiano. Go ahead. It's just beautiful that it's like, it could be Miami. Dude, Miami can't even count to three right now when it comes to designated <laughs> players. So, <sighs> <sighs> Also, that's a lot of money to tie up in a couple guys, and then the rest of your roster is, you know, how are you building the rest of that roster around them? Because you're talking about guys who you're like, you're talking about guys who are older who are like, we're going to have to like, build this roster to kind of support them because they, they aren't going to be the same. If you're talking about two or three years, they're not going to be the same guys they are now. Hell, they're definitely not going to be the same guys they were in two or three years. You're going to have to build around them to kind of support them if you do yeah. this. That's true. That's definitely true. Um, and also, many people have pointed out that uh, Miami doesn't know the difference between a TAM and a designated player deal. Yeah, that's something they still it's have just, to deal with. Man, Doing fraud in Florida is just on brand, and I kind of respect it. It, it is. I mean, they're, they're pretty good at it. Um, mm-hmm. They have experience in it. It's true. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Florida. You you're probably hate us now. Um, we have a, maybe a quote of the day, possibly, from Pep Guardiola uh, emerging. I uh, didn't see this one coming this morning either. Manchester City getting ready for a trip to Fulham to play this weekend, and... Pep was asked about style comparisons with Scott Parker, John's favorite. Who was John was trashing Scott Parker's style the other day. I mean, trashing the man's style. Scott it's Parker a is a laser. It was it was just he's a stylish man. John. No, you were trashing. You were trashing this man, and he is a stylish, stylish that, man. That is not it. That is not in dispute. You were trashing not. his style. That is not in dispute how, is, how am I saying that him wearing a puffy blazer is trashing his style? It's the way you said with it. Your stipulation it's the way. That he's styling. No, it's the way you said it. You were mocking said blazer. That's what it was. Um, but Pep said, on the style comparisons with Scott Parker, he is younger. He has hair. He is better than me. I accept a draw <laughs> on the style comparisons. Oh... He does and, have uh, hair. He has nice hair. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm envious of Scott Parker's hair. Yeah, he, so I he's definitely GQ and on the touchline. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, I, I get that one. Even with his puffy blazer, John? Even with his puffy blazer, John. I don't think it was that puffy, but okay. I thought it was. <laughs> I didn't think it was that puffy. He had the puffy shoulder pads and everything. Shoulder pads? It's not 1983. He had shoulder pads. Uh, Percy might be with you. He says puffy blazers are ugly. I didn't think it was that puffy. It was not the standard tailored blazer that you would assume with a suit coat. It had it had shoulder pads and there was a little puff to it. Well, no, no. I mean, you could do a different like tailored blazer. Like it doesn't have to all be the same blazer that everybody else wears. Scott Parker will take some style chances. We're learning. He'll also go to Liverpool and take three points, but that's another yes. that's another thing. Um. If you go to Liverpool and take three points, you can wear whatever blazer you want if you're Scott Parker, right. basically. That's, that's the, I think that's the rule we need to go by here. Uh, now the conversation is which manager in England uh, has the most drip. And Ron Digital is throwing Mikel Arteta's name into the, the mix. Um, there's a lot of talk about now puffy coats and who is the most stylish or the most attractive manager in England. All, all is on board here. Alex Bassine wants a Scott Parker versus Luchi Gonzalez battle. MLS versus the EPL in style. Okay, I'm trying to think of who who else is uh, who else is styling in uh, in MLS that could go up against Scott Parker in a bracket. Well, who is it in England? I mean, who else is there in England besides you? Got Scott Parker, you've got Arteta. Pep can turn on the style when he wants to, but I think he's a lot more casual these days. Um, <laughs> it's not Big Sam. Um, no. It's not Steve Bruce. 
Uh, it's not. It's not Jurgen Klopp. He does not care for the style. Here's a wild card for you, Gareth Ainsworth from Wickham Wanderers. In uh, oh, you're in going. You're going down a division to to yes. pull somebody up. Okay, that, that is true. Uh, Thomas Joen asks if Heinze is a tracksuit guy. I think I've always seen him in the tracksuit or the polo. Um, I do not expect him to break out the salmon colored blazer for an open cup match like Frank DeBoer did because yes. that was that was something that was impressive uh Sean Dice's I mean, we name all can't, we, we all can't dress as nice as like Garrett Southgate does so. yeah it's another good one I I am a fan of the vest I like the vest I like the waistcoat I, I, I like that style so yes Garrett Southgate comes into the conversation even though he's not with the team um Sean Dice's name has come up Giovanni Savarese's name has come up in terms yes, of style and it is. absolutely there has to there you go Peter Vermes doesn't take big style chances, but he's he's stylish. But he's he's solid stylistically. Yeah. He's yeah. Yes. Reminder that the fans of Atlanta voted Tata Martino as the best dressed coach in MLS. <laughs> his and his orange penny just came won. up in the Twitch yeah. pitch, Jarrett. So yes, the, the orange penny at New York City. Oh, that was the just best. Amazing. <laughs> so all right, the so so the Premier League bracket looks like it's Arteta, okay. Daesh. Okay. Parker. Okay. And Pep. I mean Pep's in the conversation. He has to be. And and Pep? Yeah. Okay, so that's your that's your four from the Premier League. I, I think it comes down to a Scott Parker Mikel Arteta final. And, yeah. and we will put that up for a vote in the Twitch pitch right now. Soccer for Good OG was listening in the background and is now fully engaged in this conversation. Uh that's what we're here for. We try to entertain and try to find Games new topics to, to engage. That is correct. Uh, who is the most stylish EPL manager? And we're going to take it. Well, we'll do the final four that you said. So who we got? Scott Parker. Right. Sean Dyche. Sean Dyche. Arteta. Mikel Arteta. And Pep. And Pep. Guardiola. All right, that's up in the Twitch pitch now for you to vote. We'll put that up for three minutes, so give us your vote quickly. We'll see who wins that. MLS, I mean, Lucci, Gio, hmm, who else is in this mix? You'd probably go Vermes because of... Maybe. Uh, Greg Vanny would would go styling in Toronto with the winter wear. Will he do that Mm -hmm. in L.A.? Will, will will Greg Vanny introduce more color into his sideline attire to match his surroundings? That'll be an interesting conversation oh, for the style uh, gurus. What, what about Almeida? Um, Matias. The, the short hair hurts him. The, when he was like rocking the suit with the long hair, it was it was a clean look. <laughs> Dice was a joke, but he made it in there anyway, Alex Bassine, because, you know, that's what we do. Well, you can vote for him if you hate this conversation. Uh, <laughs> Jurgen Klopp uh, with the lowest effort drip. That is correct, Coco. I don't know if it's even drip, to be perfectly honest. Uh, everybody's liking Geo and MLS. Almeida's pretty sharp, Thomas Jewin says. Uh, Raphael Wiki's name comes up from Alex Bassine. True. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Savarese is where Colin is at. Uh, Coco's on the Almeida side of things. Long hair Almeida was better Almeida, according to Coco. I would agree True. with that, too. Yes, I would agree, yes. I would agree with that. FDB, though. FDB was sharp. Mm-hmm. FDB was styling. Um, Soccer for Good OG wants to come up with the all-hair team at some point. I'm just you get the all-hair starting 11? I'm just jealous of all these people like with hair to be talking about in this because, yeah, those days are long gone. Um, Dalazon wants to see an MLS GM come up with a solid mullet. Who could bring the mullet back? Probably a South American, right? Yeah. Probably a South American who brings that mullet back. Um, Black suit, red tie for FDB was definitely the sharpest. I don't know. the, the, The salmon blazer for the Open Cup was one of the best things I've ever seen. Um, and he and he could rock the skinny jeans too. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, that, that open cup has a lot of beautiful things tied to it that don't get talked about enough. We <laughs> that, should rank I that should game rank over like, like three days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just, yeah. There's a lot about that entire open cup run that just needs its own oral history. 
So uh, nobody fell for the Sean Dice joke. Mikel Arteta is is blowing Scott Parker out of the most stylish EPL manager poll. I mean, it's not even a contest. Seventy one percent for Mikel Arteta. Nobody's digging Pep's uh, more more casual drip these days. It, yeah. it is Mikel Arteta or bust in the stylish EPL manager yeah. race. I mean, Pep Pep's casual drip with ca- with causes. Whether it's the foundation or other things, I mean, he's it's 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 casual drip with purpose. Uh, Colonel might need to push the uh, press to talk button a little bit harder. He, he's having a bad connection. Um, sorry, Colonel. Uh, try to reload. Maybe that's the best way. Hopefully that came through. Try to reload. Try to reload. Reload. Try to reload. Um, the knit red tie. Alex Vecine points out with the the red tie and black suit combo for FDB. Uh, J Dub says, "Look, Arsenal's going to win something this year. Mikel Arteta, most stylish manager in the EPL, <laughs> and, and so it is said." Um, Coco with maybe the They'll best still point. Choke it away at the very end of the vote, probably. No, it's done. The vote's already over. They they won. They didn't choke uh, it away, Jerry. That's a nice try for the joke, but that's that's also mean. Very mean. Um, Coco with the a very mean morning. Thank I you. I know I know Neil Lennon's fault. I know. Uh, Coco with the best point on Pep. Pep is like the consistent drip. You know it's great. You appreciate it. But it's never going to win the contest. True. He might have won it when he was finishing up in Spain, and maybe when he first went to Bayern, when he was very like style conscious and and like probably you know multi thousand dollar suits that uh, only Pep could be affording that are perfectly tailored and all these things, and and then like he goes to City and it's like ah. You know, I'll wear the tennis shoes. I'll wear the uh, the polo. I'm good. I'm cool. I'm, I'm casual. It's good stuff. So Mikel Arteta wins that, and all the Arsenal fans are very, very proud. Um, Abby did not like FDB's drip. Too many times he wore brown. We don't have brown in our color scheme. That disqualifies him. <laughs> he he took chances, Abby, and and I fashion I have chances. to I have to appreciate somebody who takes fashion chances. So I I will give him a thumbs up on his style. Um, Dalazan is, is promoting a 2022 Golden Blazer MLS tournament now for most stylish manager. Maybe that's a Twitter poll we have to have or, or tournament. Um, like I said, the show is going to give you whiplash this morning. I don't know how any of this is coming up this morning, but this is what we're doing. Uh, we do have a few more minutes before Mike Conte joins us at 10 o'clock. We'll talk MLS. We'll talk Atlanta United. Um, we'll ask him for his fashion favorites in MLS as well. Uh, we'll ask him what he's cooking this weekend, which is yes. going to be the uh, number one topic for sure. Um, Jarrett, yesterday Europa League, anything else stand out to you other than Rangers and Manchester United throwing away a 1-0 win against AC Milan at the very end? Honestly, that was it, and the fact that Zlatan just won't shut up. Oh. Um, where it's like, it was, it's, it's possible that Zlatan has gone from being, you know, it's not even possible. It is, in my opinion. That he's gone from being like this guy who was really good and can still have his moments. Um, like, dude's old, old as far as soccer players go and is still capable of world class stuff. But, dude, just shut up. I, I get that's your stick, but now you're, you're in that same category of you're an old heel and it's, man, it's just not working anymore. Just stop talking. And Manchester United, try not to throw away late goals in like the 93rd minute. How about that? And Harry Maguire, try to actually score from uh, 18 inches away, please. Oh, God. Please. Uh, Going back to the fashion conversation for one last one, and it actually takes us to another topic. uh, Burned. I have to give Nagelsmann a shout-out here. Not EPL, but trying some sort of NBA look in the Bundesliga is daring. (laughs) Doesn't usually come off, though. I can appreciate the effort from Julian Nagelsmann. Skinny with, with jeans his, his and fashion. loafers. I, that, there's a lot of people rocking that look these days, John. That, that's not a weird look. Um, I'm not saying it was weird. I'm just saying that's what I, when I think of Nagelsmann, that's what I think of. Is skinny jeans, I, blazer, skinny jeans, loafers. That's see, what I think No, of. I don't think of that. I think of uh, he, he takes big chances. And sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes it does. So Julian Nagelsmann, he he gets in the conversation. We talked about maybe Nagelsmann being the next in line in Liverpool. There could be somewhere else. And I did not see this one coming, and I have some big questions about it. Uh, AS with an article today that Joan Laporta, 
highly rates Julian Nagelsmann. And he is fancied in Barcelona and potentially will replace Ronald Koeman next year. I didn't see that one coming. I think Koeman's done a good job, first off. Yeah, yeah. You could decide that he's not the guy in the long term, all that. This, it would feel a little harsh to move on from him after one year. His dream job, he never really got the keys and, and got a full gas tank with the car, but he's done well. And I don't know if can Nagelsmann we just replace is the right Big fit. Sam with, can we just replace Big Sam with Coleman and just have him be the guy who comes in? And grabs your team at the edge of relegation. Is like, hey guys, we're gonna we're gonna try and rescue this thing. It'd be better than than Big Sam or Alan Pardew or, or any of that yes. that crowd for sure. Um, but Nagelsmann at Barcelona, like, I'm gonna have to dig a whole lot deeper, a whole lot deeper on his philosophy principles of play. I don't get a Barcelona vibe from him. I don't get a, a Klopp clone vibe either. He he is a little different, and he has done some different things with RB Leipzig, but I'm I'm not sure about Barcelona at all. I, I think it's far more likely that, that Xavi comes in if they go in that direction. I don't get it. I don't get it. That was on since Barcelona's made some dumb decisions, but they won't do that, I think. I I just don't get it. Um, we do have another quote on, on Barcelona before we get into On This Day. Uh, Risto Stoichkov is a very vocal man. Yes, he is. He does not really hold back. Still? Oh, what a shock. Yep, yep, he still is. Um, he doesn't hold back on his opinions. Uh, he had an opinion on Antoine Griezmann. Griezmann had a great run for a little while lately, not so much. Didn't really do anything against PSG in the midweek. Stoichkov's opinion is, whenever Griezmann is on the pitch, Barcelona are playing with 10 players. If they want to do anything in the long term, they have to sell him. Trincao and Braithwaite should be on the pitch. What's Griezmann doing there? Oof. I, I imagine Griezmann eventually trying to go to fight him, which might be the worst decision he's made all year. No, you don't fight Risto Stoichkov. <laughs> That's what I mean. You don't fight that man. Scott he Brown would, would step to Risto Stoichkov and be like, eh. Nah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, there's a like that's 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 pretty high on the list of former players I don't want to throw down with. When you're known for your time in the United States with uh, breaking a college kid's leg in a preseason friendly, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip any battles with Risto Stoichkov. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Mm-hmm. Don't want to get into that fight. All right, on this day. These can go all over the place. We do have a correction from yesterday, first off. Uh, 311 did something special for 311 Day. It was streaming. Um, They couldn't do a 311 Day like they always do, but I believe they played the entire Transistor album, Um, and it was a stream, and we had multiple people who are 311 fans who listen to the show let us know about that. So very, very cool. Um, John had homework yesterday. You want to tell us about your homework? You were doing it before the show. You you were, you know, you were cramming it in at the last minute. You didn't take yeah. time to do your homework last night. We yeah. were busy, which is is acceptable. But what did you think of Paul Wall sitting sideways? Uh, it was okay. It was okay. Give give me yeah. more. Like what what stood out to you about it? I think you watched the video. Yeah, I was watching the video. Okay, and um. It, the the riff seemed repetitive to me. Uh, I, I just it wasn't something that I'm going to sit there and add to my musical selections. It just it it didn't do anything for me. <laughs> the riff seemed repetitive. Did just, you did you check out Grills? Because I started you with Grills. I was trying to go Fisher Price with it. Ricky Ricardo was like, "No, nah, he's got to go sitting sideways on it." And I went sitting sideways. And I okay, you didn't even there. you didn't even check out Grills where he featured on on the Nelly track. No, I just, I went to sit in sideways and I was just kind of like, eh. Ricky's upset. <laughs> Ricky is upset. When, when Ricky posts, sir, dot, dot, sir. dot. <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah, you, you, you have upset Ricky. You have nothing else on Paul Wall? That's just it? Didn't do any, just didn't do anything for me. Didn't you make a comment about the video in, in uh, Texas? 
Oh, with all of the, uh, I, I forget, the hydraulics and all of the vehicles. <laughs> That's it's a good it's pull. certainly a staple of, of the South and of Texas where you have uh, vehicles exposing their hydraulic uh, expertise, just hopping up and down. There's a lot of that. And the, the Longhorns on front of the cars, I mean, straight out of straight out of a Dallas episode where you've got a, a, an old Cadillac and you've got the horns in front. <laughs> the only thing missing was J.R. Ewing dropping, dropping a, a rhythm or two. No, that was not missing at all. Uh, yes, Ron Digital, it was Paul Wall's birthday yesterday, so we, we had to talk some Paul Wall. Uh, today on this day, in 1983, Run DMC released their debut single, It's Like That. What do you think of Run DMC? Were, were their wrists repetitive, John? I like Run DMC. Christmas and Hollis is one of my favorite Run DMC <laughs> tunes, actually. <laughs> okay. You're going Christmas and Hollis on us on Run DMC. Okay, that's cool. I'm leaving this before I'm like <laughs> implicated. Yeah, you should take off Good running, Jared. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Good luck. <laughs> 1988. Rick Astley, never going to give you up. Hit number one on the charts in the United States on this very day. Yeah, I just try not to get Rick rolled on a daily basis. Poor Rick Astley, man. Like he became a joke because of the Rick Rolling thing. I I do recommend the, just going and looking at some of the videos with him and Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl. Like they've become buddies. Um, I think Foo Fighters brought him out to do "Never Gonna Give You Up" at a concert, which is pretty good. Um, there's a I I. Th- think if i if i'm not mistaken i found this random thing on youtube when i was really bored during the the worst YouTube times had the pandemic. random things on it no thanks john that's true yeah. i'm talking about when i was looking for random things during the the worst times of the pandemic when there were not games in the third division in argentina for me to watch you and me both brother yes and uh a, a kind of cool thing out of toronto called choir 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 where it's like a somewhat acapella version of of songs and it's sung like with people hanging out in a place and doing like a choir kind of thing um they did a really cool one with overkill uh uh, why am i forgetting his name right now from um minute work uh colin colin hey thank you uh, they did a really good one with him and overkill i believe they did never going to give you up uh, as well which was really cool with rick astley uh, now we have people sharing favorite Rick Astley songs, which is awesome. Um, he could he could wail, he could sing. So I'm I'm glad that Rick Astley is starting to become more appreciated after his Rick Rolling time that made him a joke. Uh, 2001, 20 years ago, and man, this this is what makes me feel old. The number one song on this day, 20 years ago, was a song called "Stutter." Do you remember Joe? No. You don't remember Joe? Nope. Do you remember Mystical? Uh, the spelling, but I'd have to listen to the music to sit there and get triggered. You don't remember any of Mystical songs? Nope. You don't remember Stutter by Joe and Mystical? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, I guess that's going to be your homework. Uh, that was a great song. That was a great, great song. Joe... Working in music stores at that time and DJing at that time, Joe suffered from his chosen stage name because people would always mix it up with other Joes and, and, and nobody would know what to ask for. What are you giggling about? Okay, sorry. Sidebar quickly before Mike comes on. Uh, I've gone down the Ted Lasso rabbit hole. I'll be the first to admit Okay, it's completely out of nowhere. All right. And so uh, I made a comment about the show off of the SDH Twitter account. And it's and I said, when a coach quotes Iverson and a Cleveland Indians legend and catcher Jake Taylor, you know you're off and running to tremendous television. Mm-hmm. Jason Sudeikis actually just liked that tweet. So I'm sorry. I, I just, it's a giggle moment for me today. That's all. <sighs> Bruh. John is is uh, fangirling over here I am on our, our Twitter over account. My favorite AFC Richmond club. Yes, unbelievable. Uh, Joe Boss, see Joe. This is why we we do this on this day segment because we are trying to broaden all of our musical horizons. I was the, and I know I'm weird when it comes to music. I fully accept it and embrace it. 
I would listen to Paul Wall and Joe and Mystical and Juvenile and Cash Money and Bubba Sparks and Outcast, and then I would the next day listen to REM and The Cure and and that. I'd go into punk and I'd go into old stuff and like I'm weird, I know, but like we can broaden our musical horizons and it's good and we can learn about things even if we don't necessarily like them like john did not care for paul wall Mm-mm. it's good you know who he is and what he does and what he sounds like yeah this is good and we will continue to do this and it is, so it is good time. mystical mystical and joe stutter it's a good song and joe stutter we we appreciate your efforts joe bost and and we appreciate John's except when he slanders Paul Wall and upsets Ricky Ricardo. Oh, That's not fun. That's not good. Okay, got it. All, All right. right. Before we get Mike on, and he's still waiting, he's on deck, you're going to have to uh, slam in a read on our good friend Steve Apolinski from Decatur, GA. Apolinski and Associates, LLC, proud supporters of everything soccer down here in the SDH Network. For wrongful death and serious injury matters, one place you need to go, three different ways that you can do it. You can shoot Steve an email, steve at aa-legal.com. You can pick up your phone, get a free consultation, 404-377-9191. Or you can go on the World Wide Web, large device or small, address bar, aa-legal.com. Hit enter, hit return, hit the arrow key, whatever gets you to the homepage of Apolinsky & Associates LLC. And if the homepage doesn't give you the answers that you're looking for for all the things that Apolinsky & Associates LLC do on a daily basis. There's a pop-up window that pops up because that's what pop-up windows do. They pop up 24-7, 365 and a quarter. Thank you, Chris Hutchison, for wrongful death and serious injury matters. Over 30 years of experience, over $40 million in judgments for their clients in two time zones in Georgia and Alabama. So is in this here state of Georgia and the one just to the west. For wrongful death and serious injury matters, it's Apolinsky and Associates LLC. The, the website is aa-legal.com. Bring in Mike. Wow. That was the fastest read of all time. Well, you said slam in a read. I, I didn't say it was bad. Relax. Calm down. I just said it was fast. Nicolifi is wooing with you. It was like a promo. I think talking about Paul Wall got you fired up. Uh, I thought you were going to say talking about Run DMC got me fired up. No, you were talking about a Christmas song. That doesn't get you fired up. Mateo is on the job getting Mike Conti on the line. And we will get Mike's opinions on, on things, and we'll get some scores on the read here as well. What's up, Mike? We're running a little bit long. Sorry about that. That's okay. Was it because John struggled with his read today? Or, uh, no, he had to go really fast because our, our On This Day segment ran just a little bit long. Well, well listen, uh, no problems here. You guys know that. Uh, we didn't even get into the soccer portion of the On This Day part but uh i wanted to ask you um 20 years ago this made me feel really old the number one song on this day was a song called stutter do you remember the song from joe and mystical uh you was the song stutter the song was stutter yes yes remember (laughs) it was 20 years I associate that more with uh, 2000. <laughs> Mike, we're going to. That was like one of the big. Hey, Mike, we're going to try to reconnect because your connection is, is a little off. Okay, I'm going to drop you and I'm going to call you right back. Let's try to get that going. Okay. I, I kicked Mike off the call. Let's try again. Because that, that sounded about like our live show last night, where the audio <laughs> was just cutting out. We're going to try this again. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> well, you know, I, I we was using the um, not very good corporate Wi-Fi because I thought ah. thematically it would fit better with the song Stutter. It would sound like I'm stuttering. <laughs> Excellent. There you right? go. Wow. Good work. Stutter, 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 right stutter. No, I, re- I remember that song very well. That it, it, Like I was trying to tell you, but apparently I was stuttering. Um, you know, I associated that song with maybe being a little bit newer than 20 years ago. But yeah, I mean, when I was doing um, 
baseball games on the radio at Penn State. That was like the big between inning song that they would play when mm-hmm. uh, yeah. when like teams would come out to to take warm up pitches and stuff like that. It, I feel like every third inning they played that. It was a very big song. Yeah, that one was huge. Uh, we had to introduce yesterday because it was uh, this man's birthday yesterday. We had to introduce John to Paul Wall. It was Paul Wall's birthday yesterday? It was. Wow. How old is Paul Wall? Oh, what year was Efforting. he born? I think he was a 79, if I remember right. Well, he's, he's definitely 80, older he's than 81. 81. He's 81? 81. No, 81. he's as old as me? Yeah, he's 40. Wow, he's, uh, well, I'm not quite 40 yet i will be in a few months but man that's depressing like i always get (laughs) depressed when i hear of people who are as old or younger than me who have accomplished more than me it it just makes me really reflect on all the uh the things i have done and not done in my life so good for paul wall mike paul wall has not called an mls cup championship yeah well paul wall sleeps on a pile of money every night with (sighs) uh does you he? know, a completely secure financial future. It can walk down the street in any major city, and people are going to say, look, it's Paul Wall. You know, if I go to Baltimore, <laughs> no one's going to know who I am. If I go to Cincinnati, no one's going to know who I am. But, you know, if Paul Wall walks through the Omaha airport, he's probably getting swarmed for autographs. I don't know. Would he at this point? Maybe. Oh, I, I, it's someone Somewhere, someone in, would, yeah. The Omaha Epley Field Airport would know who Paul Wall is. I, I'm certain of that. That's fair. All right. Well, Paul Wall's not getting ready for an MLS season. Uh, we are, and there's a preseason game tomorrow. I I really don't know if there's going to be a lot coming out of this this first game behind closed doors. You know, doubt you, it. You're a you're a new manager. This is your first chance to see your team against somebody else. You're gonna be trying stuff. This is a game to really just reinforce everything you've been working on so far in training camp. And also kind of change the tone a little bit where instead of working against each other, now you get to work against someone else, which does make it maybe a tad more refreshing. I mean, you're in your third week of training camp. You're you're getting ready to do something else, try something else, and, and have a little fun, too. Uh, and having a scrimmage or a friendly, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be like a, a full-scale friendly in the same way that we've had right. in some opposing stadiums over the years. But it's just, it's something different. It'll freshen things up. I would draw absolutely no conclusions from anything you hear about anything tomorrow. If Atlanta United wins 10-0, don't overreact. If Atlanta United loses to South Georgia Tormenta, do not overreact because we're not going to understand the context of what was being done and what was being attempted. And we're not going to be able to see it. This is very reminiscent to the friendly that Atlanta United had down at IMG against Red Bulls last January, where all we found out was the goal that Atlanta United gave up came off a press because that's something a Red Bulls digital guy (laughs) tweeted. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's literally all we do, you know, and then I think we got a little bit of information afterwards about who the starting 11 was and, and who was subbed on. Uh, but that's it. We're, we won't know anything about positioning. We won't know anything about shape. We won't know anything about tactics. We're not going to know a whole lot. So I, it's, This is tough, and it reminds me a lot of the opening day of spring training for the Braves every year. And everyone gets upset every year because generally that first Grapefruit League game is not televised, uh, and it can be a little hard to find information of what exactly is going on unless you're at the stadium. And everyone is kind of jonesing for that information because it's the first preseason game of the year. It's their first Grapefruit League game. They haven't played in four or five months, and you just want to see baseball. And I know that's how we as Atlanta United supporters feel about this match tomorrow. We just we want to see it. They're playing a match. They haven't played a match since right before Christmas. We've been waiting for this. It's exciting. And, and the reality is this is probably a bigger deal to fans than it is to the, the 22 guys out there on the pitch tomorrow. I mean, it'll be a big deal. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it's an opportunity. It's a great opportunity for South Georgia Tormenta. Um, 
but it's it's something that I think we need to keep our wits about us on. Uh, we need to keep a level head about whatever happens in this friendly tomorrow because it just is probably not going to be enough of an indication of what the plan is for this team in 2021. I, I don't think so, at least. Yeah, and Mike, you know, Mike, for me, I've been trying to tell folks, don't get wrapped up in a result. You know, if it's 7-1, if it's 6-1, if it's 1-0, don't get wrapped up in those numbers because exactly. folks, you know, uh, Gabriel Heinze and the staff are looking at relationships. They're trying to look at integration. They're looking at who fits where and who's comfortable with what they've been learning so far. So it's it's more for them than it is for us. Just don't get don't get wrapped up in the numbers and the stat sheets tomorrow, and especially during training camp. If Joseph scores ten goals tomorrow, I'll be very pleased, but it's not going to mean anything, right? Because we don't know. We don't know how those goals came about. We don't know where the service is coming from. We don't know if they decided in the 80th minute to just stop the match and have them hit 10 penalties. Like, we, we just won't know. <laughs> uh, the, the only thing tangible that I think you can take out of something like this, a preseason friendly, behind closed doors, no media, no stream, anything like that, I think the only thing tangible that you could potentially take out of something like this is if, God forbid, you had an injury. Yeah. That would be really the only um, you know, piece of information that would not have any kind of dependency on who you're playing or what you're doing because it's something that could have an impact you know, for, hopefully not, but it could have an impact for future matches and, and many weeks down the road. So that, that, to me, is the big priority in any preseason friendly. I mean, obviously you want to go out, you want to have fun, you want to work on the things that you're trying to work on. But most of all, you are just trying to get through this healthy. There's a long way to go before you get to Alonese. And there's a long way to go before you get to Orlando City. And you can ruin the plan, or at least damage the plan, very quickly uh, if you have a, an injury in a, a preseason friendly. Look at George Bellow in Birmingham last year. I mean, thank God that wasn't worse than what it looked at the yeah. time. But it was still something that, that probably derailed George a little bit uh, through the remainder of that preseason. And I'm trying to remember, did we even see George again until the MLS is back tournament? I, I, I'm trying to remember. I don't, remi- think, I don't, so. don't, I don't think, think so. he played against Nashville and no. uh, Cincinnati, if I remember correctly. So, Miles Robinson got hurt down at Leones Negros. Mm-hmm. Um, Franco Escobar you know, in 2019, first day of training. Yeah, first day of training. That wasn't in a, a friendly, yeah, but yes, even more same crazy. thing. Yeah, so, those are the things that can be tangible and have an impact going forward. But, no, I mean, if we get a press release in our inbox tomorrow, I don't even know what time this thing's being played. I don't know if you guys know. Uh-huh. But, um, you know, if we get a, a press release in our inbox tomorrow and it says Atlanta United beat South Georgia Tormenta, you know, 4-2, I'll look at it, I'll nod, and I'll delete it. Because that's basically all we're going to get out of this one, I think. Yeah, uh, there's there's not going to be a, a ton from really all of the preseason games. Um, people are asking how many will be streamed, what will be available. There's questions about the Birmingham game where there will be some people in attendance. Um, you know, it's, it's all under wraps and, and yeah. we've talked about this off air, Mike, like you have managers who have different approaches and there are plenty of, of managers and coaches in all of the sports in the United States that would love to keep everything behind closed doors in preseason while they're preparing. There's others who like to be out in front of people and like to show what they're doing. I think we're getting a sense of the former with Gabriel Heinze, who wants to yeah. really work, not in secret, but as privately Quiet. as possible. Yeah. And, you know, that's his right to do it. If he thinks you it's going to prepare it, the team the best. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and look, I'll admit, it's frustrating. I, yeah. I wish we could see more. I wish we could know more. I wish we could be out there. I think that might be more pandemic related, but I'm not positive. Yeah. I wish we could be out there. I wish we could talk to the guys. I, I wish we could do all the things that we've done the last couple of years to prepare for the season. It's not going to be, at least at this point, possible for us. I mean, I wish it wasn't that way, but if 
they aren't violating any league media policies, any media access policies, then, you know, I think Heinz is within his right to run the, the camp in that way. And if this is the way that he feels it would best prepare his team to win matches, then I have to support it because that's the ultimate goal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the goal is to win matches. It's not to, you know, do fun things for the camera and, and provide all these coverage opportunities for us as much as we want them. It's to win matches. So he's within his right to do that. And look, I, I think the club is very aware of the desire for uh, on the part of fans to to be able to see this team work. Um, but there is a balance, and, and you have to respect the, the wishes of a manager who feels like this is the best way to go about things. So it's tough, and it's going to be an adjustment for us because, uh, you know, Frank was not in that way. Tata was a little bit, but the club was also in a different place under Tata. Yeah. Uh, th th this is going to be different, and, you know... I. Again, I, I wish it wasn't this way, but I have to respect that it is. Did you? Uh oh. You mentioned talking to guys, and and we can break this news now. Uh, first off, we have stoppage time at two o'clock today. We we pushed right. it back, and it fell into a perfect time slot for us because Mikey Ambrose will be joining us on stoppage time, uh, two o five, right after we get started. Mikey Ambrose will be talking to Mike and I on stoppage time. Facebook.com slash 929 the game. Is that, uh, can I put that in writing and tweet it when I hang up with you guys? You can. Okay, excellent. Good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to Mikey. Yeah. I did an event with him uh, at the Marriott Marquee a couple years ago. Mikey is a really, really good dude. He's the team foodie, or was the team foodie, uh, when he was with the team on the first go around. So, uh, I mean, I'm not going to waste his valuable time talking to him about barbecue but he is a really really and, and jason can back me up on yeah. this i mean the the rare instances where we would be on road trips and we would be at the team hotel or, or we would be around the team mikey would always go out of his way to say hello to us he's a, he's a good dude i'm really glad he's back with mm -hmm. us and i'll be anxious to pick his brain you know quite honestly i, I think you know to get um an impression from a left back as to what training camp has been like under Heinze is going to be pretty interesting uh, because the, the players that we've had access to so far, I know Joseph's going to speak today. Yeah. We'll we've try to grab to a Guzan. couple clips from that as well to use for stoppage time as well. Right. We've talked to Guzan. We've talked to, um, I think miles, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of the Spanish language guys. Um, we haven't really heard from uh, any of the wingbacks yet, so uh, it, or fullbacks. So that, uh, other than Miles Robinson, so this is going to be, I, I think, enlightening for us to to try to just get some impressions from Mikey on on what it's been like and and what they've been working on and how he feels about being back in Atlanta. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, in the Twitter timeline, Mike uh, Bartimus Prime has a cooking down here question that I'm going to save to the end, as we always okay. do. Okay. But did you see on uh, MLSsoccer.com the favorite to win MLS Cup in 2021 according to the BetMGM odds? I did. Yes, I did. I did. Hmm. LAFC at plus 500 and Atlanta tied for ninth at plus 2,000. Yeah, I, I just, I get it. I don't think Atlanta's getting quite enough respect, but I do get it because they do have a new manager and there has been, again, some roster turnover, but um, I don't know. Like At Atlanta United has proven that they can do this uh, and that the, the player that led them to the Cup in 2018 is going to play this year for Atlanta United. LAFC, I, I, I still struggle to give them the benefit of the doubt because they haven't done it yet. Yep. So I, I get it. I mean, I think honestly, that's, it, I don't even want to say it's disrespectful because I know these are numbers that are being generated to uh, produce wagering. So it, this doesn't necessarily even become a respect or disrespect thing, but it is a little hard to fathom how Columbus is not the favorite to repeat a team that I think got better in the off season. Yeah. yeah. Um, they should I be mean, the favorite. I, There's no yeah. question to me. 
And again, I mean, these are numbers that are produced to generate wagering. So I totally get it. LAFC is a a big club and a big market and might be a lot of LAFC fans who drive out to Vegas to place bets. I don't know. But yeah, Columbus should be the favorite. Um, Columbus should absolutely be the favorite. Could LAFC be the second choice? Yeah, I can see that. But Columbus should be the favorite. And I, I think Atlanta United's probably a little undervalued at, at ninth. A little. Um, n- not a lot. Yeah, just a, a little. Lot, but a little. I'd put them in that mix. I, I think Columbus is the favorite because of their balance, because of being the defending champs, because of the fact that they got better. Um, they've got to have everything fall for them again. You know, they, they can't have a major injury. You know, they've got to now balance more minutes with, with some questions with Pedro Santos, with Kevin Molino, with Luis Diaz. You know, you're not going to be able to play all of these guys all the time. Can Caleb Porter manage the, the, the mentality of the group? Can he manage the emotions of the group? Can he manage potential frustrations? You know, it's going to be a different job for Caleb Porter, and we'll see how he does. But there's nobody else who I would put ahead of them as the favorite at the moment. Now, that might change by two months into the season. That might change yeah. midway through. But they're the defending champs, and they got better. It's hard to say they're not the favorite to repeat. Agree. Agree. And it doesn't mean LAFC can't win. No. It doesn't mean anyone else can't win. But I, I just I, – I don't know how the defending cup champions can get better in their, their off season coming off winning a cup and not be the favorite to repeat. Yeah. There's bigger questions with the others. There's just bigger questions with the other teams that are below Columbus, in my estimation. I mean, LAFC, it's goalkeeper. You know, Seattle, it's it's on the wings. You know, you don't have Jordan Morris. Um, you don't have another winger right now. What does their lineup look like? Atlanta has questions. I mean, you mentioned a new manager. You know, you've got a lot of new faces. How do they adapt? Do they they struggle out of the gate? Do they hit the ground running? You know, are they deep enough at center back? A lot of people are asking that. We'll just have to see where it goes. But Columbus has the fewest questions. Uh, They have to be the favorite in my mind. No, I'm right there with you. I mean, I looked at, you know, NYCFC was one for me that was weird because you're looking at... They should be nowhere near that. No, they should be nowhere near that. They've got bigger questions than most. Uh, But it's another big market, like Mike said. You know, you're you're trying to generate action and, and do that if you're... If I had spare juice boxes, that Columbus number being where it is 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 pretty nice. Um, I, if we were if we were rating the top five choices to win the cup, regardless of market size and all the other factors that bookmakers might take into consideration to generate a number, I mean, I'm probably I don't know about you guys. I'm probably looking at Columbus first. Yeah, they're my first, no question. LAFC yeah. probably a begrudging second, but not far ahead of, um, say, a Seattle. And Seattle does have questions. Um, and then probably rounding out my top five would be Philadelphia and, oh, boy, fifth choice. I don't know about fifth choice. Maybe maybe Portland. I don't know. <laughs> Sporting? <laughs> Portland yeah, and Sporting yeah, you know, would be in my top sporting. five. Absolutely. Portland yeah. and Sporting would be in my top five. Um, Philadelphia, I, I I think they would be in my top five. I, I need to see the back line. I, I'm not worried about Anthony Fontana replacing Brendan Aronson. That one doesn't concern me. It's uh, Finley coming in from Scotland replacing Mark McKenzie, or, you know, is it uh, – Jack Elliott and Jacob Glesnes, like I don't know what that looks like just yet, um, but I think Philly would, yeah, Philly would be in my top five. I think it's Columbus one. Oh, if I'm going to rank them in a power ranking, I'll go Columbus one. This is off the top of my head. Two is Philly. Three is Sporting. Four is Portland. Five is LAFC. So Seattle, not your top five. No, I think they've got bigger questions than the rest. Fair enough. I, and I would have Nashville just outside that group. I'd have Atlanta just outside that group. Atlanta would be in the top ten. Nashville might yep. be ten. 
Yeah. yeah and uh, Nashville I'd probably have, 18th at a plus 5,000. Yeah, that's Ooh. way too low Nashville. for Nashville. Now, that, see, again, th- this is there's a difference between bookmakers and, and power rankings. Yep. Uh, right. Nashville's really good and proved it last year. Um, you know, it, Orlando would probably be in the second half of my top 10 somewhere. I'm probably going to end up naming more than 10 teams. Honestly, <laughs> a team that I think is really intriguing is Dallas. If Pomacall is healthy, good um, point. Yep, and really I guess we're point. getting some, some images of him being, it, it looks like doing normal things in their training camp. But, uh, you know, between Pomacall and um, uh, Tanner Tessman, Dabo's godson, uh, I, I think Dallas could be really intriguing. I think Dallas might, might make the biggest leap of the uh, you know teams in the Western Conference this year. I don't know if I'd have them in the top 10, but they'd be right there. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, we could, have, we could do a full two hours on this to rank teams 1 through 27. We got a lot uh, of preseason honest- content. Yeah. Well, honestly, you know what I think one of the cool things is this year, guys, is I think it's hard to identify 27. Yeah, I think like who is number twenty seven right now? I think that's hard to identify. I really like what Cincinnati has done. Yeah, they won't uh, be twenty seven. No, uh, DC. I love the managerial hire they made with Lasada. Uh, they've got work to do, and they're going to be new, and it's going to be, be crazy to watch. Yeah, but I think they could be crazy fun. You know, and and Austin. I I think Austin has built responsibly. It, yeah. Quite honestly. You know, if you held a gun to my head and said, who's going to be 27, I would probably say Vancouver or Montreal right now mm-hmm. just because of what those clubs are going to be dealing with. That's a good call. Yeah. Um, you know, Montreal, Montreal. especially. But, uh, it, you know, and, and that doesn't mean that Montreal's got a bad team. Mm. They don't have a bad roster. They're, they're just going to be very, very challenged. Same with Vancouver. But I think that's one of the really cool things coming into this year, guys, is – it's not going to be easy to say, oh, hey, you know, you, you look at your schedule and you're going to play this team here and that's going to be an easy win for you. And then you play this team the next week and that's going to be an easy win. There are not going to be easy wins. There are not going to be walkovers in this league this year because the teams that that really struggled and underperformed in 2020 have done some smart things in this offseason to make themselves better. What do you think about the uh, opener being in Orlando? Honestly, hate it. Uh, I, I I do not like that at all. I think, you know, now fortunately you will have a little bit of a head start with your Champions League matches. So it's not like you're coming into the, you know, the deep end of a, a very, very cold swimming pool. You are going to have a little bit of a running start. But, man, I, I, I hate jumping right into the season with an intense match that has a feel to it like that one. They're Almost certainly going to have fans, possibly a lot of fans. Sounds like State of Florida is pretty much wide open right now. That's going to be really, really intense. And you, you're coming off your Alo Valenze tie uh, right into that. Uh, I do like going in there a lot more with Joseph Martinez as opposed to without. Oh, so yeah. that does help. But I, I don't know. I would have loved to have eased into the swimming pool a little bit with something. Uh, a little less intense right off the bat. Uh, it'll be great for the fans. It'll be great for us. It'll be very entertaining. Uh, but would not have been my first choice if I were looking for a, a winnable week one match. All right, we'll get into to more scheduling stuff and, and preseason stuff uh, on stoppage time. I almost feel like we need some kind of a uh, jaunty tune to get into cooking down here. <laughs> for the end of your Friday segments, because we, we've got a, at least one question. I think a couple more on the Twitch pitch. Okay. Yeah. So from uh, Bartimus Prime, and uh, Jason is trying to set up a, a a segment, and I guess it would be what a fundraiser for soccer in the streets with me in the kitchen here at Office HD and Nick yelling at me about trying to prepare something. <laughs> yes. That what, we're, so. we're going to actually do cooking down here live. It has to happen. I'm not trying to do this. I'm going to do this. We need a screen with our angry uh, Italian chef, Nick Alifi, screaming <laughs> at, at John as he's trying to cook pasta or something. Okay. Yeah, or something. And so, Bart's question for you, Mike, We've lost in, this, in this scenario, 
what's your one recipe that you would bring to CDH to teach me how to cook? Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, no, he could really be well, mean. Well, I think he's trying te- not to, to be. Teach, to teach me. John how to cook yes. or to teach me. To teach Bar John. John. To teach me. Uh, probably peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> a boy brother no i'm joking he's not um so, no no I, I, i'm joking i'm joking you, you know what john you know what i would do do you have an objection to eating veal no it's just been a while okay i i would i would bring a veal parm to john because uh I, there is a little bit of skill in you know dredging the veal and flour and doing the egg battering and and you know, making sure it's good and breaded and that you're you're pan frying it but not making it too dry, things like that. Like, there is a, a little bit of nuance to doing it. The, there's multiple steps to doing it, but it's not, like, ridiculously hard either, and it doesn't take forever to do. Um, and we could have a, a couple different things going at once that are, are not oh, necessarily... Oh, 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 wait a minute Yes, here. yes. That, this, this sounds like good entertainment because it is well, not no, impossible no, to but, do. It's not but, hard. But no, it, all of this is possible. Yeah. Okay? It is very possible to be pan frying or sauteing uh, a veal parm and boiling water for spaghetti. Yes. You know, yes. and maybe in a third pot heating up some sauce. Or we could have fun and we could even make the sauce ourselves. It's not, it's, it's steps. It's a lot going on, but none of it's hard. It's not like doing that beef bourguignon where you're, um, <laughs> you know, you're taking a whole Dutch oven full of stuff and then you're, you're straining the fat and then you're putting it back in. Yeah, and you're Mike, hold on a second. John, do you know what a Dutch oven is? No. That's what I thought. Okay, just checking. No, there, there we go. That's, <laughs> that's one more. <laughs> One more uh, reason why we might want to do veal parm, because I'm pretty sure John has one pot and one pan. Yes, I think. I think. I hope. So that's what I would do. And if you don't want to do veal, we could do chicken or eggplant or something like that. Oh, there that's will be no eggplant in this house, sir. That is not going to happen. Why okay, do you well, hate eggplant? <laughs> What's wrong with eggplant? Everything. Such as? The taste, which yeah. there is none. That's the whole point. That's of it. why you make it Parmesan style. Yes, right? yes. Now, now for those who don't like season their food, then yeah, I, I could see where you would <laughs> you would say something like that. But uh, you know, John, the, the best part is they even make seasoned breadcrumbs. Like you don't have to season the breadcrumbs; yep. we can just buy it. <sighs> yeah, this is gonna happen. Did I lose? No. This is going to happen one way or another. This is absolutely going to happen. And now we might need two screens with, with Nick on one side reacting and Mike on the other side trying to talk John through these things and eventually Mike and Nick losing their minds. No, I would be patient. I just want to help. You know, I, I'm not going to be Gordon Ramsay. Like, you would have to walk away from like the camera Nick, multiple times. <laughs> What are you? You're an idiot sandwich. That's Nick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Nick would be, uh, I cannot remember his name, the uh, Italian chef that they have on one of the morning shows in, in England who uh, loses his mind and the, the closed captioning just says rants in Italian underneath him. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to be Nick. This is going to happen. It'll be a fundraiser for, uh, for soccer in the streets. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to make this work. Um, what are you cooking this weekend, Mike? Uh, I'm cooking up hopefully two Hawks wins. Uh, so uh, no cooking for me this weekend. I, I've got a busy weekend, but but it's, uh, the, but it's a visit to the drive-through, though, isn't it? Uh, could be. We'll see. Uh, I we tonight. There is no game, but uh, we Leanne and I think this might be an optimal night to uh, if we can find a restaurant nearby that's got some outdoor seating going and it's not too crowded because I think everyone probably has the same idea. Yeah. Uh, we might try to do some outdoor dining tonight because it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, the weather has really picked up and it's been nice. But before that, we got stoppage time at two o'clock. Yes, looking forward to it. Well, I'm Mikey Ambrose on with us, so uh, see you guys at two. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, okay, Mike. see you guys. All right, 
You guys get to throw in your scores for John's super fast micro machines esque read before Mike yes. joined us. So please yes. uh, refresh your scorecards and send them over. We'll talk about that. Um, I am so going to figure out how to make cooking down here happen because I, I need to watch this and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh some more and laugh again and then watch it again for a fifth time laughing hysterically again that needs to happen uh pd stoppage time is not on twitch because on the 92.9 the game twitch page uh dukes and bell are on at that time so no we are on facebook so it's facebook.com slash 929 the game i don't think you need a facebook account to watch it um i think you can just go straight to facebook.com slash 929 the game and watch okay but no, I don't think, I think, yeah, I don't think you need a, a Facebook uh, name or anything like that. I think you can just dial it up and you don't need a Facebook ID. I think you can just go ahead and straight up watch. Yeah, I think you can go to the link. And I'll, I'll post it on my Twitter too, at, at Longshoe, and I know Mike will on, on his at Mike Conti 929 uh, Joe Boss, your score for your read, 8.6 for not breathing but not passing out. And <laughs> I think following the, the orders that I gave you to uh, slam in the read. Yeah, that's um, what you said. Cassie says, 9 out of 10, over before you knew it, but I was left with a mind to call uh, AA-legal, and he minded the, the dot-com gap. So good job. <laughs> good job. Alex Basine gave you a 12, trying wow. to uh, somehow give uh, extra points to find a new AMP money for us. Um, I'll tell you how, if you want to contribute to getting a new AMP for our live shows, you buy a scarf. That's what you do. Yes, there you go. Uh, we or still have some. We, you can buy T-shirts as well, but we still have scarves as well. Uh, they are in production as we speak. Uh, looks like we might actually get them before the end of March. And uh, the link is on our Twitter page. It is our pinned tweet. They're $25, 5 bucks to ship, or you can come pick it up at one of our events. Um, we can figure out that portion of it if you are in the locality of Atlanta or you're going to be near Avondale Estates. Maybe if we have them in time for that. That's iffy. We might, but we might not. Yeah. Um, 25 bucks for the scarf, 5 for shipping, and uh, you send us a message, and we'll send you the PayPal to pay to. It's very, very easy. Um, go ahead. You're about to say something, I think. No? You're just I moving mean, around yeah, and making yeah. noises. Oh, I, I God, it's Jared. If... Man. What, Jared? <laughs> I'm sorry, but... I didn't see you coming this time. No, it's a cooking show. It's the idea of Mike being involved in a cooking show is is just the juxtaposition against Nick's anger at Mike's just pity. I guess is the word I would use. Michael Michael lose it at some point though. I, I know he will. I've never seen Mike really lose it though. He'll try like. really hard not to, but he will. Yeah. So, did you get the 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 the, the gap between the dot com? Is that just like Paul Harvey trying to possess your soul for like three seconds? Or no, that's the that's the Pat Summerall John Madden murder. She wrote. That's where that is. That's he's, where that he's came going from. even more old school, Jared. I'm about to say I went old school. He went well. Pat Summerall's still in the air. You know, a little bit after yeah. murder. Yeah, she I mean, wrote was it's, not it's though. The old, <laughs> I went older than he did. Yeah, it's the old running joke that. When Pat Summerall would cut the promo for the nighttime programming on CBS, it just started off as there was there was a pause where Pat Summerall would go murder, she wrote. And then it turned into a joke and a gag and a bit between Summerall and Madden. And it got to the point during, I think it was a playoff game, and Madden tells this story on uh, NFL Films, where Summerall laid out for so long after saying the word murder Madden had to take his headset off and leave the room because he was laughing so hard because of Summerall not saying Shiro. And it's on YouTube if anybody I'll wants have to, to look see this it. up. Yeah, I'll look this up. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. That's where that came from. It is a complete and total homage to Pat Summerall and John Madden. Okay. okay fair enough. <laughs> more anyway. more scores on John's read. Uh, Sean gave you a DQ. It was not scorable. I didn't even know what was going on. The read was like driving NASCAR. <laughs> uh, four card gave you a five because he missed it. So you're you're Wait a second, blind. I thought if you missed it, you're supposed to give me a ten. Not everybody does. That's that's, that's the nice people. Four cards not being nice here. He's just giving you a five. It's average. 
Um, PD gave you a, a 12 because you held your breath for two minutes straight. It was not two minutes. It was like maybe 55 seconds, which was good, which was really good. Uh, four card does give the soccer down here hoodie. Uh, clutch rating. It was clutch this year. Gets the stamp of approval. I yes. would agree. I was, I've was. i been really happy with my SDA hoodie, which you can get at where, John? Teespring.com slash soccer dash down dash here. Jarrett, you with us still? Yeah. Um, can I can I ask you what you think my reaction would have been last night when John had a new read for our event sponsors, uh, Toka, which was, which was great, and thank you to, to Toka. And if you, you go to their page and you click on the how did you hear about us and you put in SDH, you'll get a free session for your kids at Toka, which is awesome. But Toka had a website in their read. And John said when he gave the, the website, HTTP colon backslash backslash tokafootball.com. What do you think my reaction was? Uh, I hope it was surprised that it wasn't HTTPS because it's not a secure server, but... No. Well, it was, it was a secure server. There wasn't S. Oh, it was HTTPS. Okay, good. Sorry, my bad. I, I was so blinded by everything else that I wasn't even factoring that part in, Jared. <laughs> at that point, I assume the rest of your brain was just screaming so loudly at you that you didn't hear anything after I that. I didn't. When he, when he said HTT, it's like everything went blank. Well, and then there was also an exclamation point in the read, and I decided to emphasize that too. But by not showing exclamation, by literally saying exclamation point, that was yeah. how you accentuated that. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. and, and the word count, 72. Yeah, I included that part for some unknown reason. It was on the copy. Oh my god! So what was a lot of other stuff there? on the copy. I know it's just it's it's. Well, this is what I get for missing live events. This is what happens, Jared. If you were there, you would have lost it as well, and then I would have at least had. Company. Probably would have walked out of the room. I was on my headset. I couldn't. Uh, Abby gave your read today seven point one two plus two for looking into the camera minus four for yelling. Plus one for something else. I like that you get random plus ones. Six for something else as well. Then bonus points. Can't find what I actually wrote. Abby's just throwing out a score. Um, Abby also wants the cooking show to be recorded and shown on YouTube, which I am fully in favor of. of. Oh, yeah. Um, Chris Berry says, uh, there, I realize there's no way John will land the dot com on the downbeat because of the sound delay. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. that's true, and also he that can't hear it. That it's, it is a bit of a guessing game because of the sound. Uh, welcome to remote broadcasting down here. It happens. Uh, Pacine just wants the fact closure. that he's trying to hit the post is admirable. He deserves a half point at least for having the wherewithal to try and hit the post, even if it's not really possible. I was about to say, shouldn't you lose the bonus point when you realize that we've been doing this for over a year now during a pandemic, and you can't hit the post? Hey, I'm still trying to hit the post. All right. I mean, it's hard though with the delay. It's just, you've got it's a, not like you're hearing it live. Yeah, you've got to factor in the delay. Um, man, um, has I have has anybody else been getting like ridiculous amount of spam calls lately? Man, yes, it, it's really seemed to pick up again. It was horrible around election time, and it is. And it's the same number again. for me, and for some reason, I can't block it. Mm, not good. Um. Was it a backslash or a forward slash, John? On, on your read, your your read last night. Oh, the read last night it was colon double backslash. Okay, there you go. Uh, Kefsi blacked out at exclamation point as well. Um, okay, uh, Sean Vergar is requesting a soccer down here polo or pullover, some dry fit. Don't know if Teespring has that, although they are adding more things. Um, it could be something we explore in a very limited run elsewhere, and we'd have to do it like our scarves, where there'd probably be yeah. a pre-sale component and stuff. Right. But uh, your request get, like, is duly noted. Dry fit short sleeve pullover, like uh, Gene Chizik used to wear on the sidelines. The dry fit short sleeve, like quarter zip. Because that's just all kinds yeah. of like ridiculous yeah, things that contradict one another. Yeah, it was just the most another. ridiculous thing you've ever seen a human being wear. All right, John, I think we have news out of England. Um, would you like to check on your beloved Premier League and a club uh, known as the Blades in Sheffield? Because I believe they have made an announcement. Uh, let's see. 
on the brink of leaving. That's what Are Sky we still on the says. brink? We're still on the brink of leaving, according to, to Sky, play. but I will check the Twitters and see if it's anything different. Come on, Sheffield United. Stop dragging this out. We should have had an update. Yeah, really? Man. Crazy. Uh, nothing updated on their Twitter page, but apparently yesterday was Jack Rodwell's birthday, so that's what Sheffield United was excited about. Well, I wish they could, I mean, happy birthday, but I, I wish they could uh, get this done so we can really start talking about Neil Lennon going to Sheffield United. <sighs> Please don't. We were having such a good time. <laughs> uh, yeah, Turner, it still reports at this stage. They were supposed to have, I think, a 3 p.m. Um, press conference that was going to be Chris Wilder's press conference before the weekend match and then it was changed to a press conference not a manager's press conference we're past 3 p.m local time correct yes so, uh, that was 10 a yes yeah um don't know exactly what's going on at sheffield united maybe they're trying to get neil lennon in there right now Jarrett. Uh, we were having such a good time <laughs> i know i know uh Rich Ransom uh, posted in Atlanta United on this day. What is it? To, uh, on his Facebook. He said, on this day, I said this on Facebook, and I regretted it every day since, and it and his last night's brewery tour show going to go on iTunes. So uh, answer that in a second. Rich, on his Facebook, four years ago today, said, a team from Atlanta filled with South Americans is beating Minnesota in the snow. Maybe Atlanta United is for real. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. That was accurate. Um, that was on this day. That was the first match I called from a monitor in my life, which you don't know, first, how hard it is to call a match from a monitor. It's a different mindset entirely. Second, you don't know how hard it is to call a match from a monitor where the field is covered in snow. Um, and also when it is not a very large monitor and it is uh, not in the highest of definition. So there was a lot of guessing going on at that point. Um, but people couldn't tell. And we were like, people thought, first off, they thought we were there, which was great that we did our jobs. Um, we didn't lie about it. We just called the game. Um, second, people thought it was a good call so we did our jobs it was good but that was really hard and i'm glad i wasn't there because it was really cold i think it was actually colder the next time in minnesota though if i remember i think the temperature was colder the next win in minnesota when uh leandro gonzalez Perez was sent off in the first half yeah, uh, you had an own goal, and then you parked buses and planes and trains and automobiles and rode that thing out to a one nil win. Well, it's because Minnesota was happy sending in. Oh man, they had to send in like fifty crosses in that game, and yeah. like Chris McCann probably had twenty five clearances in that game. I like, think Michael Parkhurst pumping. actually had around forty, if I remember right. It was some really ridiculous number. I mean, yeah, it, they and they just kept. They didn't try and actually, you know, play with the ball on the ground. They just got it wide and just kept crossing it in. And Atlanta just kept heading it away over and over. They were fine with that. So the game from 2017, uh, game two for Atlanta United, coming off of the loss in the opener to the Red Bulls. You, you go to Minnesota. It's snowing. Everybody's wondering if the South Americans are going to be able to deal with the snow. You get a third-minute goal from Joseph Martinez. You get a 13th-minute goal from Miguel Almiron. You get a 27th-minute goal from Joseph. You're up 3-0. Penalty for Kevin Molino. I think Lorenowitz committed the foul. He converts. It's 3-1. You go to halftime, and it's like, well, I, I think Alec Can made a big save late in the half, uh, pushed it off the crossbar. It's 3-1. It's like, well, it's okay, but... Then Miggy with another one in the 52nd. Joseph completed the hat trick in the 75th. And then Jacob Peterson with the final ice dagger in the 90 plus four. And Atlanta had 10 shots on the day, scored six goals on eight shots on target. It was one of those kind of days. Six goals in eight shots on target is some pretty efficient stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to 
I'm trying to find the stats from that 2018 game, it, but Atlanta had 60 clearances in that game. Oh, yeah, I knew it was obscene. Parky was at least in the 30s, I think, because I remember just laughing about it for days. Uh, Kepsi oh, wants to uh, nickname Jacob Peterson the Ice Dagger now. He's uh, he's calling games with Sporting Kansas City. Uh, yeah, Jacob is in the yeah. in the booth with Nate Picady in in Kansas City. Minnesota had forty nine crosses. Forty nine crosses. Wow. They had six hundred and eighty two total passes. <sighs> mm. Yeah, that was a very very strange day. Um, Thirteen shots, forty nine crosses, six hundred eighty two passes, and Atlanta only had to make three saves. Three shots on target. <laughs> Man, I, I wish I could find the individual stats there to, to, to pull up Parky's numbers because just the I clearances were right yeah, now. Yeah, we're, we're racing to figure out. The clearances were insane. Um, yeah. I don't know what the XG in that 2017 game was for Card. He says XG of 20. Well, no, he only had 10 shots. So, I mean, I guess your max would be an XG of 10, right? Yeah. And you didn't quite have that. Uh, um, Parky is listed as 18 clearances. 18, man. I thought it was more than that. Then somebody had a ridiculous number. Maybe it was McCann. It might have been McCann who had the most. Did he Parky had have the 13 most? 13 or 14. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm just LGBT remembering the team field, total. So it doesn't matter. I thought there was somebody who had something absurd. I mean, it, it's not. Parky's number is pretty ridiculous, but I think, oh, yeah. I, think I was mixing it up with the team total. Anyway, I, I digress. My bad. I apologize. It happens. Wow. But thank you, Rich, for a pleasant Atlanta United on this day memory. Those are always fun. Yes. And, and Rich is also uh, lobbying for SDH pins to go on the fanny packs. Okay, so now we need pins. We need golf shirts. We need uh, like pullovers Pullers. that are dry fit type of material. We need a new amp. <laughs> we need... Um, we need a cooking down here show. <laughs> we're yeah. we're working on it. We're getting there. We're, we'll try to take over the world in the next year or two. It's just yes. a little slow to do it at times, um, but we're getting there. Uh, this weekend, well, let's start with today. Let's start with the action on tap for today because there are games in the major leagues today, and there's a bunch of games in Latin America as well. Uh, Alex Pacine, Newcastle Sorry, United. Hosting oh. Aston Villa. Uh, Things have flipped a little bit for these two teams from last year, eh? Um, Villa would go to eighth place with a win, at least temporarily. Um, they have won four. They have lost four out of their last ten. So it has been uh, patchy is, is, I think, the proper terminology. Jack Grealish, uh, he's going to be out due to illness. He has recovered from a leg injury, but he is sick, so he will not be playing. They will be getting a couple people back. Um, Newcastle, good news for Alex Pacina and Newcastle fans. The Magpies are undefeated in their last 12 home matches against Aston Villa in all competitions. They have not lost to Aston Villa in their last 12 home matches in all comps. That should give you some good feeling going into this. Um, on, the, mm. on the other side, Emiliano Martinez... If he gets the clean sheet, it would be his 15th of the season. He would draw level with Ederson at the top of the Golden Glove standings, and he would equal Aston Villa's all-time record for clean sheets in a single top-flight campaign, which is held by Brad Friedel, 2009-2010. What Newcastle are the... is a plus 282. Okay. Villa is a plus 110, and your draw is a plus 235. People are also wanting sorry Alex shirts now as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's... man. Um, this is the game in hand for Newcastle uh, relative to those below them, uh, according to Alex. How are you feeling about this one, Alex? Um, that that good run of results in the last twelve against Villa at St James's Park. Makes me feel pretty good about this. But then I remember that it's Newcastle in 2021, and that should make you feel bad. They don't have a lot of people. They have a lot of injuries. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know if I can take that win for Newcastle. What was the draw number? Uh, it was in the 230s. I could go there. You could talk me into that. Uh, Newcastle, 2-2-6 two, two and six in their last 10. Nine goals scored in their last 10 matches. They are 2-4-9 and nine in their last 15, having how, scored how are 11. You, how are you doing your, is it win-draw-loss or is it win-loss-draw? Are you going American or are you going European? Win-draw-loss. Win-draw-loss. So you are total Euro snob on us. Well, I'm reading it off of Odds Portal, and that's how they structured it. Sure, sure. You're, you're, you're a snob. It's okay. So Embrace two it. wins in their last 15, nine losses in their last 15, one win in their – two wins in their last 10. So uh, that's – two two wins, six losses in their last 10 matches, and it's worse in their last 15. I really want to go draw here. I Not do. Touching it. Pick something. Get off, touch Get off the fence. Get off the fence. Not touching it. Chicken. Jared, are you a well, chicken? Well, let's put it this way. If you want me to pick something, it's our new T-shirt. That's what I'm picking. I'm investigating odds right now for the Aberdeen job. Sorry. What's up? Newcastle? What happens today? What about them? They're hosting <laughs> Aston Villa. Sorry, Alex, for Jared's uh, saltiness. Sorry, Alex. Um, who are they playing? Aston you know Villa. Yeah. Oh, God, Aston Villa. Man. Um, no, I was, uh, apparently Skybet, uh, someone posted a screenshot, I'm trying to see if it's real, that Skybet may have suspended betting on Stephen Glass for Aberdeen. Oh, ah, interesting. Um, I have heard nothing on that. Um, the pairing... That's why Steven, it's investigating. That's, yeah, true. No, the pairing of, uh, Stephen Glass and Sven Goran Eriksson is not one that I would have expected to be talking about in 2021. You never know. You never know. Um... Hmm. Newcastle might be, I, I think Alex's first comment on Newcastle today, pain, is maybe the best way to put it. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm sorry, Alex. I, I want you to be happy, but man. Uh, Johannes is also questioning, Jarrett, your research on the clearances uh, in that game with Minnesota. I went on MLS's site. So yeah. You went on MLS's site because yeah. Johannes yeah, said 18 clearances. Have I had it wrong all this time? Oops, I thought it was 17. I may have also miscounted. Um, I did that count really quickly while trying to count quietly and very quickly. I may have, I may have double counted one. All right, um, we will. It still would have seen number it, it, it's clearances. Ob, it's obscene either way. It is. It yes. is obscene either way. Thanks again, Minnesota, for not actually trying to play through ten men in the freezing cold who were tired because they've been playing a man down for you know fifty forty fifty sixty minutes. Thanks again for that. Yeah, that's true. It, it was really cold too. Um, I felt really bad for. Darwin Quintero, who was introduced to the sparse crowd yes. that day, he did not look happy being walked out there at halftime, freezing in like probably five coats. Um, they had to go over and like stand in front of the supporter section and freeze in front of them. It was super windy. It was not cool. Really bad introduction. Uh, but I mean, weather, it happens. Ricky with uh, an interesting idea, and this comes from Andrew Wiebe on Extra Time, I think yesterday, says that the MLS Cup winner should host the Shield winner first game of every year. So basically, it's it's Community Shield, but it's a regular season game. Right. Um, I think that'd be cool. I do too. I mean, it's happening this year with, with Columbus and Philadelphia on the opening weekend. I am 100% behind that. That would be great, and it should be a nationally televised game. It should be a big deal. It should be... You know, roughly the equivalent of the the Thursday night NFL opener with the defending Super Bowl champ. Yeah. What kind of trophy do we make for this? Well, no, we no, it's a regular season game. You know, trophy. It's 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 not oh, a community no, stakes on this for no good reason. So. Oh, you just want to make up a trophy and and just Hell make yes. up a Super Cup, basically. Yeah, I want to make it a community shield kind of thing. No, like, so here's what I want to do. I don't want to do that. I I'm okay with doing this for the regular season opener. I'm even more okay with the MLS Cup winner playing the Open Cup winner the well, week before the season in a Super Cup. And not a, we're not going to call it a Community Shield. We're not going to be English with it. We're going to go Super Cup. Super Cup. Not Monster Truck style. We're going to go with a Super Cup. The Super Copa. Let's do this. And not the Spanish style where Athletic Bilbao wins the Super Cup and they didn't win anything last year. It's not four yeah. teams, it's two. It's the yes. MLS Cup champ 
and the Open Cup champ. Boom. The Super Cup. Let's put a trophy on it, put some cash to it, get a sponsor, more revenue. Let's do it. Boom. Don't give the loser John's cooking, Kessie. That's just wrong. Oh. That's just horrible. The American mug Mile High 17 <laughs> promotes. And then Ricky wants to take it a step further, and I fully endorse all the trophies. Uh, North American Super Cup, the Open Cup versus the Canadian champ. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Let's do it. Just an empty jug of moonshine. There you go. You win. Congratulations. <laughs> Pacine wants Haribo to sponsor the... Uh, um, the MLS Super Cup or the American Super Cup. It would be our own. I'm already thinking Cup. about trying to get like Watkins Vanilla to sponsor the Atlanta Nashville games. So yeah, sure, let's keep going. Sure, sponsors and and Super Cups and, and let's do it. Let, let's have more trophies. I mean, Mexico has two league champions every year. They have mm-hmm. two Copa MX champions every year. They have the Campeón de Campeones, which is the two league champions playing one another. The cup champions play one another. That's six trophies. Let's do it. We've got like we've got MLS has two with the supporter shield and MLS Cup. We've got the US Open Cup. We've got three. We got a lot of room for more trophies. Mm-hmm. You know, how can anybody win six trophies like like these European clubs do or like some of the South American clubs do if we don't even have six trophies? That's what I'm saying. We don't need a league cup. I don't want that nonsense. The, 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 the actual gummy bear cup idea can, can go in the trash. Well, if it's sponsored by uh, uh, Haribo, then it's a literal gummy bear cup. It's, I'm okay a, with that. it's a literal gummy bear cup, but it's not like a whole nother cup competition with five or six rounds and, and all that, because that's just a waste. We will have the league's cup. There is CONCACAF that you can win. So, I mean, technically, you could win these, but let's make it a little bit easier. Let's have more trophies. Let's have the Super Cups. Then we can have the debate, like when people were trying to get on Pep's case. But, oh, well, you won the Community Shield. That's not really that important, right? That's not really that big of a deal. It doesn't count. He's like, I got the trophy over here. I'm pretty happy with it. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's, let's have more trophies. But, yes, you could win the Supporter Shield. You could win the MLS Cup. You could win... The Open Cup, all in the mm-hmm. same year. Yep. Um, nobody has done that. That has never happened. You could win CONCACAF, which would be four. Yes, you could win the Club World Cup. Um, you could, if you did the things the year before that you would need to, you could win the Campeones Cup in that year as well. So that would be a fifth. You've got a Club World Cup that could be in the same year. Yeah. So that's another trophy you could win. I don't think you could actually do League's Cup as amidst of that as well. Because I, I think just the qualification process, you wouldn't be in the, the League's Cup if you're in comp. Yeah, you wouldn't be in, in League's Cup and Campeones Cup in the same year. So you can't do that. Right. Um, Ricky promotes the MLS's back cup for the, the opening game. You could play off of that. I'm okay with something like that. Um, But we need a sponsor. We need cash. We need to bring in more revenue. Mm -hmm. All the money. And yes, Darren would need a bigger bed, Alex Pacine. That is correct. Because there would be a lot of trophies in it, hopefully, if we have all these possible trophies. We need to add maybe the the, the Moonshine Cup that that Jarrett is is trying to put to uh, Ricky's idea. Maybe that's a little much. But the American Super Cup between the Open Cup and MLS Cup winner, I am on board with. And I am on board with something. Or Locos Cup. Oh, boy. Um, I am on board with, <laughs> with something for the first regular season game. But make it a regular season game. Make it a regular season game between the MLS Cup winner and the Supporter Shield winner. Because those are two MLS trophies. Yeah. They can Welcome to the MLS something. Super Cup, sponsored by Zima. No, no. We need the American Super We can't confuse people. Super Copa de, de, uh, de America. No, no. We need the, the, the Super Cup of America involves the Open Cup. That's not an MLS trophy. The MLS Super Cup, if we really want to just confuse people, would be the Supporter Shield and the MLS Cup winner would be the regular season. We need it's a sponsored by them. MLS, but like the actual like other the, MLS. The Realty Agent? Yeah, the Realty Agent MLS. That would be awesome. Let's do that. Man, they've got some cash, right? Yeah, they, they, they can sponsor everybody, this. Everybody got houses. They win houses. 
There you go. Your MVP gets a house. Sure. Well, oh, you know, do it like uh, do it like the home run derby used to do, where they had the Century Twenty One when they sponsored the home run derby, where they had like you, you hit the drawing. you hit the MLS sign, at, you know, in one of the corners. No, no, they, they would they would if you entered a drawing as a fan, you got tied to one of the players. If your player won the derby, you won a house. It's not bad. So let's get MLS to sponsor an MLS event. Yeah, exactly. I like it. Yes, I am on board with this. Good job, Jared. Good workshopping. Uh, Don Garber, you can give Jared a commission if that happens. That's fair enough, I think. Probably not a house, though, Jared. I don't think you're going to get that out of it. That's okay. I, I don't dream very big. It's okay. Yeah, maybe like tickets or something. Maybe you get tickets to the first event that you named. Just give me, <laughs> please give me a credential so I can go ask each and individual player and manager what they think of the MLS Cup brought to you by MLS as many times as I possibly can until they kick me out of the venue. Yeah, that would come pretty fast, actually. Uh, today in Spain, you've got Levante and Valencia. Uh, Valencia, oof, winless in their last four games away from home. Two wins in their last 24 on the road. Levante's only lost one of their last 12 at home. However, Valencia have not lost to Levante in their last eight games, but this is a very different Valencia these days as they are pretty much broke. No cash, no money. What are the odds on Levante and Valencia, John? Uh, Levante is a plus one thirty seven at home. Valencia is a plus two nineteen. Your draw is a plus two thirty. I'm not putting anything nope. on Valencia. Um, I would have to go Levante there. What was our pick game of the day? This was a tough day because there's not a ton of games. Newcastle and Villa. What was everybody's picks on Newcastle and Villa? Uh, you picked the draw, yeah, and the rest of us picked to be Villa. Optimistic. Sorry, Alex. See, Alex, I'm trying, man, but my picks this week have not been good, so I might have jinxed Newcastle. I'm, I'm sorry if I did. Uh, Real Madrid's going to be our smorgasbord primary game tomorrow morning, 10-15 kick, and Zinedine Zidane has been happy this week because Sergio Ramos and Eden Hazard are back training. They joined the group session on Wednesday. Ramos had surgery on the meniscus in his left knee February 6th. He was ruled out for six weeks, but he's back after about four. Five, yeah, four. And, and he's he's good. He he might be able to play this weekend, but they're probably going to save him for the Atalanta second leg. Uh, Hazard got injured on February 3rd, muscle tear. Um, injury expected to be out three to four weeks. Then it got lowered to two or three weeks. He hadn't been back. It kind of bounced back and forth, but he came back on Wednesday in training. They're expecting both to be back for the Atalanta match. I don't think they'll factor in here. I think they'll rest them and save them. But they should be ready to go for midweek next week, March 16th, where they play Atalanta. Real, no surprise, a minus 476. Elche is a plus 1425, and your draw is almost a plus 600. In France, Lyon can go to the top of the table with a win today. They have not won the league title since 2008. There are 10 games left. They are at Rams. Lyon's won the title seven times. They're three points back from Lille, but they'd go to the top if they win this, this afternoon. Uh, PSG is right there in the mix. Monaco is right there in the mix. Lyon's got some players back from injury. They should be at full strength. The French League? might be the best race this year, which I would not have called coming in. Lyon at full strength, a minus 222 at Reims, who's a plus 628. Your draw is a plus 367. That's got to be Lyon. It's got to yeah. be. They go to the top of the table. Um, the The thoughts about these trophies and what they would look like is insane on the Twitch pitch. Um, you have swords being brought into the mix. Uh, well, you want a, a sword and shield, I get a it. A sword trophy. Um, you have Nicolifi throwing Baby D East Side West Side into the mix, which I'm just going <laughs> to leave out of the conversation entirely <laughs> because I learned a long time ago when you drop that in unexpectedly, you can start a fight. I'm not playing Baby D East Side West Side on the show right now because there could be a brawl. It, it's been known to happen. I've seen it happen before. Um, 
Big Oomp Records. You might want to check them out if you don't know them. John, you don't know Big Oomp, do you? No. No, I didn't think you would. Uh, other games in Latin America, you've got Liga de, or Copa de la Liga in Argentina tonight. Three games, uh, one at 5.15, Aldo Civi and Central Cordoba. I recommend watching Aldo Civi. Fernando Gago is the manager. It is his first job. He played for Gabriel Heinze last. His team is playing in a very positional play idea. Um, it's a fun team to watch. Aldo Civi, Central Cordoba, 5.15. You can watch on Fanatis. I'm not going to do the HTTP. It is fntz.co slash soccer down here. Uh, 7.30, two games, Huracan and Lanús. I know Coco is going to be excited about his beloved Lanús. Pedro de la Vega, probably going to play in this one at Huracan. 7.30 as well, Union de Santa Fe is hosting Gimnasia. That's Argentina. Uh, Costa Rica, Erdiano hosts San Carlos. We've got action in Ecuador, Deportivo Cuenca against Liga de Quito. We've got action in Uruguay. Uh, starts early. I-, I like the really early kickoffs in Uruguay on a Friday because there's times where I don't really care too much about the French game or the Premier League game on the Friday. And I'll, I'll opt for Uruguay. Uh, Plaza Colonia against Wanderers. And then at 4.45, it is Defensor Sporting against one of my favorite teams in South America, Boston River (laughs) from Uruguay. That is at 4.45. Colombia has a couple of games, uh, 3.15, Deportivo La Equidad against Invigado FSA. And then at 8 o'clock, it is Tolima against Jaguares. And then you got two games in your beloved Liga MX, John. Yep, and it is an 8 and a 10 tonight in, in Liga 8, MX. 8.30 and 10.30, I think. Eight, yeah, 8.30 and 10.30. You've got 6 versus 7, and then outside the playoffs versus outside the playoffs, Puebla and Atlas. Atlas has been on fire recently. Uh, folks are looking at that one as pretty much a draw across the board. Puebla at 180, Atlas at plus 170, your draws is a plus 195. Juarez and Pumas, who have both lost for their last five, they are your late game at 10.30. Juarez is actually favored at plus 125. Pumas is a plus 222. Your draw is about the same. Okay. Final time for questions. If you got them, you can tweet at us at soccer down here. You can also throw them into the Twitch pitch. We will get to them. Uh, there was a question earlier about posting the live show from last night. We had some pretty significant audio issues uh, in the building, so people watching on Twitch had a lot of yeah, we're working on the sound here. Yeah, we're working on the sound here. Go up and down. What I'm going to do is the whole show, I, I don't think, is going to actually make sense if you weren't watching it live. But I am going to clip the interview with Sanjay Patel from Soccer in the Streets. That will go up on our pod catchers here in a bit, probably before stoppage time at 2 o'clock. So be on the lookout. That'll be the, the most appropriate thing to clip. Uh, maybe the intro to where we talked about just the, the situation and the year anniversary of everything and all that. So it'll be a, a shortened version of the show because the rest of it is me like frantically trying to figure out how to make the audio work in the building. That was not fun. No. Uh, a couple of things on the Twitters. Uh, Tafka has a bold prediction for the year. Bold prediction for the year from Tafka. What is it? Barco throws down an absolutely stellar season, 10 goals, 12 assistances, and we see a far more versatile style of play for him, far less obtain ball and dribble a lot till fouled, end quote. I have no problem with him dribbling until fouled. I don't know why that's a negative. Um, It has become a negative that for some reason people say that earning free kicks is bad if it's Ezekiel Barco doing it. But if Lionel Messi does it, it's great. You know, um, earning free kicks is a good thing. And if he's earning free kicks... He's creating scoring opportunities. That's good. I do think he can do more. I, I, I understand the premise, but I, I think the idea that earning free kicks is bad is, is, is misplaced. Um, and I've, it, Tafka's not the only one. I've had this conversation in general. I think it's a little overblown. Um, I do think he'll play well. I, I think the system is suited to somebody like Ezekiel Barco because he's going to have 1v1 opportunities quite often. He's going to have chances to create opportunities um, with one defender in front of him. He's going to have to make the right decisions. He's going to have to win the 1v1s on the dribble. He's going to have to make the decisions on on shot pass. 
and he's going to have to be a little quicker on the ball to make those decisions. But he has that in him, and I think the system will, will give him those opportunities to make those decisions. A uh, quick reminder. Oh, sorry, hold on, hold on. Tafka uh, followed up and, and said that the part about earning free kicks is bad because Barco struggled to stay healthy. But it hasn't been in those situations that he's been hurt. So I, maybe out of a fear of him getting hurt, I get it. But others have said it's not productive. And, and I, that's where I disagree. Like, you're in a free kick in a dangerous spot. You're, you're being productive. I can't think of any of those that have led to an absence for him. Um, the time at midfield against Columbus is the closest in the Open Cup game where, I mean, that's just a bad foul. There's nothing Barco did to draw that. It was just a horrible foul um, where he was kicked in the knee. Um, other stuff has not been foul related. So I, I, I get it. He's, he's got an injury history and there's concern, but no, I want him earning free kicks. I want him earning free kicks and I want the team to be better at capitalizing on this. Uh, quick reminder about soccer down here.net. Uh, Bart Keeler has posted his thoughts on the final U 23 squad trying to qualify for the Olympics for the first time since 2008. So check out what Bartimus prime has to say over at soccer down here.net. Uh, news out of Germany, uh, COVID-19 discipline news from Kevin Hatcher. Wolfsburg defenders Marin Pongrasic and John Brooks reportedly, according to Build, caught attending a party with no masks and no distancing. The club will find them. According to Hatcher, it should be pointed out that the vast majority of the Bundesliga players and staff have behaved impeccably. Yeah, they have, and that's been a huge part of it, and it's uh, not good to see John Brooks involved in this. You just have to be smarter. Um, you're putting people at risk and now you're going to be punished for that. And you should be because that was the agreement to come back and play. And Germany was very clear in the expectations that they had for their players and their staff members. And they've been very strong in punishing them and they should be. And uh, also some odds and ends. Once again, Tafka is all for the sword to accompany the shield trophy. And he also asks, what happens if the USL team wins the open cup? That's why it's an American super cup because then they play the MLS cup winner. Just like when Wigan won the FA cup, they played in the community shield. Like it's, that's, that's why it is run by us soccer and not MLS because the open cup is not an MLS trophy. It's, Almost always going to be won by an MLS team. But, yeah, you can have something crazy happen. I mean, when Wigan won the FA Cup, they were in the Premier League. They were relegated that year. And when they played in the Community Shield, they were a championship team. Um, I think Millwall might have been the last championship team to play in an FA Cup final when they played Manchester United about 15 to 20 years ago. I think they were the last championship team in a FA Cup final. Um, the last lower division team to win the U.S. Open Cup was in 1999. It's the only one that's won it in the MLS era, uh, Rochester. And I think they were the raging Rhinos at that time. They, they beat multiple MLS teams to win the Open Cup that time. Nobody's done it since. There have been... Uh, it's, I think it's been over 10 years since an, a USL team has been in the final. I think Charleston was the last one against DC in like 2008, if I remember right. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible, Tafka, but that's why that trophy, an American Super Cup, would be against the top flight champion and the domestic cup champion, and it'd be run by US Soccer. And it'd be a chance for them to make money. And MLS should be on board with it. And that catches us up on the Twitters. That is all on the Twitters. Let's see what we got on the Twitch pitch. If you guys have final questions, please bring them in. Uh, Tommy educates us on Boston River. They play in the Florida neighborhood of Montevideo. Um, I have. I don't think I've seen a game at Boston River. Um, I did see a game not that long ago at Phoenix, and I love their little stadium, which is right on the bay in Montevideo. Um, seats about eight, 9,000, and the, the camera is on the one side and past the very small set uh, of stands on the opposite side. There's a road, and there's water. And it's just a, it's a really cool look. I um, would love to go to that stadium one day. Uh, I, I love that's what I love about watching games on on Gold TV and in Ecuador and in Uruguay. 
uh, watching games from Argentina and seeing some of these venues. Uh, still, calling a game from Herediano was, was one of my all-time favorites because I love that little stadium. And the next time we ever go to Herediano, it won't look like that. They've done nope. some uh, big renovations, and I, I do want to see what they've been able to put together. Uh, Thomas Juwin on Barco and Dribbling says if the MLS refs would actually get their hands out of their pockets and show some cards for persistent infringement, Barco's dribbling and drawing fouls would be even more valuable. Yep, and yep, and yep, yep, yep. I totally agree. Persistent infringement. Learn it. Love it. Pro, please. Uh, Joe Bost, our first rec league game, or first rec league match tomorrow, over under of two goals for Jake. Um, Jake can do more than I got the over on that. Jake can score. I've, I've heard about Jake's goal scoring exploits. He can get more than two. John, what are you pounding the keyboard about? Good grief. Folks are wondering if I like bananas. Okay. Could you have like told them quieter? Cause wow, that was louder than normal. Oh, I, oh, probably because the microphone's positioned a little closer to the keyboard than it has been in the past. Even better. Um, very cool. Uh, and very cool, Joe. That's awesome. I hope Jake has a, a big weekend. I hope he gets a bunch of goals, too, while he's at it. Um, Abby points out that the Germany's head of, of the country is medical. She's not playing around. I don't even think this gets to that point uh, unless she had to sign off on all the things that the Bundesliga did. They've just been out in front of this, and they've handled it really well. They were the first ones back, and they've had very few issues. But when people have gotten out of line... They have taken care of it very, very fast. Uh, what about your banana opinions? Do you like bananas? Yeah, no, I'm, I I take bananas. They're fine. Okay, I like bananas. What about plantains? Uh, no. Why? What's why? It's why? Just, uh, there's something about the taste and the difference between a banana and a plantain. Just not a plantain guy. How have you had plantains prepared? Uh, I don't think they were prepared necessarily i think there was just eight raw plantains i think so yeah okay first off um try maduros they're very good i'm not as big on the like fried plantains or the plantain chips as much i like the maduros yeah the plantain chips was another way too and i wasn't all that into it all right um turner asks now that you've called a game at the azteca what's a Concacaf stadium you want to call a game at um Toluca. Yes, the Messio Diaz. Yeah, very. the Estadio Messio Diaz is, is a very cool-looking band box. It, yes. it looks like you're right on top of the pitch. Um, that would be a blast. Uh, I mean, old school, the Estadio Jalisco in Guadalajara, but Chivas doesn't play there anymore. Um, hmm... You know, the other stadiums in Mexico City are, are cool, but nothing's going to top the Azteca. Uh, Toluca would be awesome. Uh, Tigres Stadium would be very, very cool. Uh, it's it's very different than Monterrey Stadium. Um, getting further into CONCACAF, uh, if I remember right, and I can't remember the name of it, Jamaica, they play, I believe, at I think it's called the Oval. I think they they call it like the nickname is the Office in Kingston. Um, it, it's it's a tough place to play. It, it's not the greatest like stadium in the world, but it'd be cool to call a big game from there. Um, Saprisa would be a, a cool one. Um, Olive Lenze would be a cool one. I don't know if we'll get that opportunity or not. I'm, I'm Assuming we won't, as we're still kind of figuring out pandemic stuff. Uh, those are the ones that come to mind. Um, you know, back in the day, it would have been cool to call a Puerto Rico Islanders game in CONCACAF. That was a fun watch with Puerto Rico Islanders making deep runs in CONCACAF. So Toluca is the one that comes to mind first, Turner. Oh, uh, Independence Park is called The Office in Kingston. Okay, Jamaica. cool. I knew it was called The Office. I can remember the name of it. A statue of Bob Marley marks the entrance to the site. It should. That's awesome. Um, Thomas DeWin was screaming about you eating raw plantains. Uh, no! <laughs> exclamation, exclamation. No! I'm not a fan of the tostones as much, Thomas. I'm sorry. I'm not. I like the Maduro so much better. 
Uh, Abby says that you have to be taken to the Cuban diner on your way to the fraction at some point when normalcy returns. Um, the thing I would push back on that is I don't generally eat a big meal before a game and Cuban is a big meal and I want it to be a big meal. I don't want to like halfway do Cuban. So that'd be more of a post game after like an afternoon game. And that might happen this season. Yeah. That could happen on a weekend. So we'll, we'll figure that one out, Abby, for sure. Uh, Abby, who eats raw plantains? No one except John, unless he said that just to say, just to say it to show he tried plantains. Makes you want to go, hmm. Do you even know when you had plantains, John? It's been a while. Yeah. I, it was the, I had plantain chips last, then I had plantains. Because my mom would do some, uh, she'd go kind of off the rails when it would be looking for food sometimes. I'm just saying. Sure. Go right ahead. I'm just saying. Uh, you're, you're making yeah. things up, I think. Right. It's, it's been a long time since I had plantains, but I had plantain chips sooner than that. Chips are different. I mean, I like bananas, and banana chips are just okay. Um, but I like bananas. So, I mean, that's not the same thing. We're going to have to figure this out. You're going to have to actually like have real plantains. Well, there's a, there's a star difference between bananas and like banana flavoring is a different animal yeah it's not as good right completely it's 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 a whole nother thing like it's one of the most unique things in in terms of like fruit flavors the difference between like what the fruit is and the flavor is that is like the extract that people use to flavor things in artificial ways joe bost is requesting bananas foster as the dessert for the cooking show that works for me you really want me to set fire to the kitchen at office hd don't you no, because you shouldn't, because people make bananas foster and don't set things on fire quite often. I mean, uh, we could try baked Alaska and see, and like literally use fire. Thomas DeWin says, do you want John's wife to lose her husband and house at the same time? Well, like I said, we've already had the, the incident with the, the pizza box in the oven, which set itself on fire. That's a so. whole different thing entirely. That's not actually mm. cooking. That was a, that was a, that was a, a precursor to cooking. It wasn't That's even just cooking. called a mistake. <laughs> That's just a simple mistake. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Uh, Pasin says that we need to try patacon, which is like a giant tostone with things on top of it. I have had that, and I do. I, I'm okay with that. I don't just like tostones, even with like a, a dipping sauce or anything. I'm always if I get to pick how I want my plantains prepared, I'm going maduros every time. But a patacon's not bad. Depends on the toppings, of course. Now, now I'm going to have to go down, and I'm not going to be able to have Maduros or any of this, but now I'm in like a Latin mindset. I'm going to have to go have like uh, maybe a torta from um, the, the wonderful gas station uh, Taquitos Express down the street. There you go. Yes. Yeah, I might have to have a torta. I might have to have a torta de milanesa today. That might be lunch. Good, good stuff. I'm very lucky. Thank you, Taquitos Express, so much, so much. Uh, Abby hates banana flavoring, I have learned today. Um, a lot of yelling about that as well. Real bananas only. I I, yes. I agree. Agreed. I support this. I support this. Uh, Thomas Jewin says, 100% banana extract, banana essence, artificial banana are all nasty. Can only use actual banana. Mm-hmm. And now Thomas Jewin continues on the plantain road. Uh, if you're going all in on plantains, mufongo, drool. Hmm. I've not had the Mufongo, Thomas Jawin. That sounds good. Uh, Ricky is having, uh, or no, he's not having it, but he recommends it, and I have not had it. Uh, Choripan at the Venezuelan restaurant in Lawrenceville. That is a must-hit when you come to Gwinnett for the brewery tour. Uh, Zuarepa. I've followed Zuarepa, but yeah, I've not made my way up to the Zuarepa yet, Ricky. Um, the Choripan at Elsewhere Brewing in Grant Park is very good, and... I'm pretty sure I'm going to get that and some Fernet for the Super Classico edition. Super Classico. They don't have monster trucks in Buenos Aires. They don't. That would be strange. That's their fault, to be fair. No, it's not. We don't need the monster trucks. We don't. Um, I just imagine Gravedigger just rolling around. Gravedigger. (laughs) No. (laughs) A bunch of stadiums and just desecrating these sacred grounds and the reactions that would come out from people. They would never be allowed back. Dennis Anderson would have to be smuggled out of the country. Yeah, no, it would go very, very badly. Um, it would. I don't Grave recommend digger it. at the Maracanã. 
that's Brazil. That's a different country. Um, and that that's going to be named differently. That would be if they went to the American and thought, we're here, right? No, man. This is, Wrong this, place. This ain't Argentina. Yeah. Wrong place entirely. Um, the Brazilians would encourage, might encourage him to go destroy the Argentine stadium. No, there. they would. They, they would say, no, you, you, you go down to uh, this place called El Monumental. Yeah, they just yeah. did some work on it, mm-hmm. but it'll be fine. They'll, they'll be fully on board with this. It'll be great. Um, no, I think it would be Choripan and Fernet and Coke for the Gambetta edition of the Super Classico. Super Classico. Jesus, could you stop doing that? Really? Man. Do you do that in Mexico? Is, is it that noise too? Because that Super Classico is on Sunday night. Are you going to be sitting there doing that for that game? Yeah. You are? Yeah. The game's going to come on, and, and when 2 Day NA comes in to talk about it, you're going to be doing your monster truck voice? Every time I see it on, every time I see it on a graphic, <sighs> and they start talking about it. Adriana Monsalve and Risto Stoichkoff and, and everybody talking about it on 2 DNA. Super Classico. Adios mio. Adios mio. Uh, I will not be doing that for the Gambetta. We'll just be watching the match and talking about it. And hopefully there will be uh, lots of flashpoints and incidents and madness. And we'll be talking about that Sunday afternoon. Do we have an updated time? Because initially it was going to be 4 o'clock. Well, remember, uh, uh, we have spring forward this weekend. That's why it, so it started looking ah, at 4. Ah, good point. It is 5 o'clock our time. That's why. Thank you, John. That, that is very useful. Can we just I get forgot rid of this that. whole time change thing? Aren't they working on that? Yeah. I think just not fast enough for my liking. Yeah, it's a little confusing at times. So 5 o'clock for the Gambetta. Super Classico. Go ahead. Super Classico edition of the show. Sunday at 5. We'll probably come on just a little bit early on Twitch. Uh, tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, is when we will start the smorgasbord. And the feature game will be Real Madrid. Um, kind of slim pickings around that. But maybe yeah. we get some big-time fouls in Germany, some crazy stuff happening. There, there's games from all over Europe. 10 yeah. o'clock See, Crystal Palace. Morning, Crystal that. Palace West Brom did not qualify. I mean, we'll be like keeping up with it, and if somebody gets kicked in the face, like we'll we'll try to bring you video of of said kicking in the face, and we'll let you know about goals and such. And yeah, I mean, it's a game to follow, but it's not going to be the feature game. No, Cause I don't want to bang my head on the table in front of me the whole time. Yeah, the gravy bowl is not one to focus on. No, it's not. It's not at all. So that's tomorrow at ten, two o'clock today. Stoppage time. Facebook dot com slash nine two nine the game. Uh, we start at 2. Mikey Ambrose joins the show at 2.05. We'll ask him how preseason is going. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably slip in a food question because he is a foodie, as, as Mike Conti told us. And uh, we'll ask him about some of the differences. I mean, look, Mikey has been in preseason with Tata Martino. He has been in preseason with Frank DeBoer. And he's been in preseason last year with Diego Alonso. And, and now Gabriel Heinze. And how different is that? That's something I, I want to find out from Mikey. Go ahead, Jarrett, before we go. No, I got nothing. Oh, I thought um, you were going to say unless something. This is the, no, no, this is the time for final comments. Uh, go. Yeah, okay. Um, should be a fun weekend. Um, enjoy whatever. It just, it, if nothing else, like it should be It should be fun rivalry weekend. If you don't have a vested interest, try and still find your way to these games. It's they're fun to just experience, even if you're watching it from a neutral. It's just a fun experience to to see people lose their minds over something. And even if you don't fully understand it, that honestly makes it more better, makes it more better to me. Mo better. <laughs> makes it more yeah. better. I'm, I'm with you on yeah. that. Yeah. The, these, that's, that's what's fun about, you know, it was a lot of fun with the, uh, the Gambetta last weekend where the game we had with San Lorenzo and Huracan, eh, it wasn't the greatest. But there were all kinds of other things going on. We learned about Manly United from Australia. I mean, look, yes. yeah, that's, that's what happens with these things, so... Uh, entertainment and soccer will take it around here uh, on SDH. Uh, John, final comments before we go. Um, looking, I didn't say looking forward. I will be looking at the game in the Premier League this afternoon, Newcastle and Aston Villa, as we're leaning towards, sorry, Alex, uh, the, the black T-shirt with the white lettering. That might be in the queue pretty soon. But Newcastle's got this one, and then they've got Brighton in eight days' time. 
two big games that could be uh, leaning toward the end of the season with the game against Fulham to determine who stays up and who goes down. The broadcast schedule is out for the CONCACAF men's Olympic qualifying schedule with Fox. Uh, the U.S. will kick off against Costa Rica next Thursday at 5.30 on FS1. Uh, John Strong and Stu Holden will be on the call. Um Next U.S. game after that. All these games will be on FS1 and FS2, it looks like, or at least a good number of them will be, which is good, and not just the U.S. games. Next U.S. game is March 21st, which is a Sunday, and that will be on FS1 at 7 p.m. against the Dominican Republic. And then the last group stage game is against Mexico on Wednesday the 24th, that's a later kick. It's a 9.30 kick on FS1. Semifinals are on FS1 March 28th at 6 and 9, and those are the play-in games of the Olympics, essentially. And then the final, which doesn't decide the Olympics, but is still a final, is at 9 p.m. on March 30th on FS1. Uh, good stuff for FS1 to pick these up, because I've I've had to go to weird places to find these games in the past, these Olympic qualifying games. I think we had to like find it on NBC Universo one time, and that was before that network was widely distributed, and we found a bar who was able to get it somehow and watched it. Uh, it's good to be able to watch it on FS1. Good stuff, Fox. Yes. Good stuff, Fox. I agree. Yes, and that'll do it for us. Uh, tomorrow morning for the Smorgasbord, Sunday afternoon for the Gambetta. Make sure you're following us on Twitch. If you are so inclined to subscribe, we appreciate it. Um, if you are a subscriber and you're not in our Discord, please let us know so we can get you into that. Uh, we also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash soccer down here. We have the scarves for sale. We are fundraising for a new amp. We have our Teespring store. <laughs> we are working on doing more things because we have a tour that we have started last night uh, that will continue here in a couple weeks at the Lost Druid in Avondale Estates. Thanks, everybody, who came out last night. Thanks, everybody, who watched on Twitch last night. Thanks, everybody, who's watched on Twitch today. Thanks to everybody who has listened on our app live and who will listen to the show later. Uh, we are thanking you in advance. Uh, hopefully, you can join us for stoppage time later this afternoon and more shows this weekend. And then we're back on Monday. And maybe we'll have something to talk about with this Atlanta United preseason game. Maybe not. Maybe we'll have some pretty pictures. I don't know what we'll know, but uh, we'll try to break down whatever we know on, on Monday after that. So thanks for hanging out. Much plot to y'all. Much plot to y'all. Much plot to y'all. <laughs>